Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Saturday. How's it going? Hi, Delwyn, Aisha, Shem, you made it. Hey, Fiona, how are you all? Sorry, I came in really loud, didn't I? Sorry, this is a little over overexposed too. <laughs> but this is, you know, so dark, so. How are you? Okay, I have a few things I wanna make sure <clears throat> I mentioned they're not like a big deal or anything. First of all, I don't want to forget. <laughs> um, I got another project from Hearts Fabric um, in a box. Came surprise yesterday. Maybe it's been there for a few days. I don't know. And it's a bag and there's all kinds of hardware and it's going to be so much fun. Um, uh, I can get it for you if you guys want to see it. Um, um, I also was shopping on Waywack. Where's Terry? Is Terry here? <laughs> um, she's like my industrial uh, foot um, lover as well. I saw a an invisible zipper foot on there. I think I've seen it before, but I didn't think of I didn't really think about it. Um, and there's two of them, so I almost bought it, but I think I'm gonna wait because the the difference between the two is the weight of the zipper you use. I want to make sure what weight I use. Um, I bought some, a few other things on there. I got some of the woolly nylon. It's not called that, but that's what I got. I got some of that. I got some jeans top stitching thread, and I got a binding attachment. Um, what else did I get? I just needed like odds and ends, some zippers and things. So yeah. <laughs> hey, Barbara. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Nancy. Beverly. Beverly. Beverly wins the award right now because she's been every like few days. I get an email from her with timestamps in it for the stream that just happened. And so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So she just did the timestamps for the sewing part one of the Girl Friday blouse. And we all know how much I struggled during that stream. So those timestamps are golden. So <laughs> it's okay, Shim. <laughs> Shim, you are such a wonderful part of the guild. I really appreciate you being there. So you, you are a really great participator in the guild and that, wor that works better for you. And that's awesome. So, <clears throat> so. I might have to get up and get a glass of water. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to tell you guys? I knew there was a few things. I was like, I should probably mention all these things. Oh, so I saw Sew Over 50 is doing, I didn't read all the d details about it, but they just did a post about supporting Ukrainian designers, um, like pattern designers on Etsy, buying things from them that are like um, PDF versions and things like that, right? Uh, and Spoonflower just did a curated list of Ukrainian designers. And so I bought some, that sunflower print they posted as denim. So I think I'm going to bump the overalls and make some jeans in a couple of weeks out of that sunflower fabric because they shipped my order already. Like it said it was going to ship March 23rd. 
spoon flowers on it. So I'm excited. Yeah, way whack haul. I haven't gotten it yet, Libby, but I just ordered. So. <clears throat> Are there heavy duty seam gauges? See, if you're a seam gauge fan, I bet people want to know that because um, I feel like you are either camp seam gauge or you've never used one before. And I've never used one before, but I know people love those things. So that's really good to know. You got you like that the, the um, heavy duty seam gauge, that's cool. So yeah, Libby, I noticed that they have a, an invisible zipper foot for an industrial machine and um, the the there were two and then they were either for two coil or three coil and so i just want to see what coil size i use so i'm going to check it out you've been watching my jutland videos all morning Ooh, how are those streams i don't want sunflower over the overalls are for my husband i don't think he wants sunflower overalls <laughs> so yeah <laughs> They're, they're pretty like sunflowery, you know what I mean? I actually did consider overalls though, but I really want some jeans in it. Let me see, I can probably post, the, pull up the fabric. Should I try? It's pretty cool. Let's see. Um, I think it's like on their front page. Yep, there it is. Uh, this is it right here. <laughs> Crazy pants. I love it. I'm going to make jeans out of that. What pattern should I use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> you, need, you need one to every pair, pair of those. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that would be cute. They would be really cute, but I'm, I, I'm picturing those pants, like some like cropped, maybe I'll make jeans and I'll roll them to make them cropped. And then like a little chambray shirt with it, like a light blue shirt. Yee, I'm excited. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> right, Nancy, perfect jeans. They'd be great overalls too. Hi, Anna, welcome back. I feel like as overalls, um, and there's nothing wrong with this, because sometimes it's just the right thing to do, but I feel like sometimes, doing the really obvious thing. Um, I don't know, I just want to see, can I not do the obvious thing? But sometimes it's really smart to do the obvious thing because the whole time you've made this thing in something not so obvious, you're like, oh, I still just would have been great as that other thing. So, yeah. Hi Debbie, welcome. I know that print is great. That's the one they shared on Instagram. And so I went to look at the curated list because last week they had 25% off for pro members. And so, and they were like, hey, you didn't take advantage of this. I'm like, yeah, because Spoonflower, come on. I have, you know, a bank account that I want to keep, you know. Terry, I have something to tell you, <laughs> which you probably already know. Um, but uh, uh, then I was like, okay, I'm going to look at the whole list. And I just couldn't get that fabric out of my head, the one that they shared there. So I just went for it. They have a lot of non-sunflower um, ones in the curated list, too. I can give you a link to that list if you guys want. I don't know. I'm not really like promoting it. I feel like it's a nice way to passively support. Uh, enter. <laughs> hey, Martina, how's it going? You were, you were using the word jeans and overalls interchangeably. Do you think they'd be better overalls? Because they're going to be jeans. No. <laughs> so, Terry, um, <laughs> so I was on the Waywack site. I know that every favorite sentence of yours starts with, I was on the Waywack website, isn't it? <laughs> um, and you probably already know this, and I've seen it before too, but um, they have a, a presser foot for invisible zippers. And I had it in my cart, and then I realized there's two for industrial machines. 
And it's like, I don't do a ton of inv invisible zippers, but it would be really nice to have it. And I think it's like $8, you know? So um, I didn't get it because it comes for 2.0 coil or 3.0 coil. And I don't know what I usually have because I usually have whatever invisible zippers I have. So I'll have to see what's in my drawer. I have a feeling they're all 2.0, so. <laughs> Shem, I know. Blackbird can really get a hold of me too. I sometimes get mad at them. I'm like, can you stop? <laughs> Please. Same with Maker's Fabric though. Like, um, yeah. Darling for overalls. I'm not making overalls. I'm gonna regret, you know what I could do? I could do a pair of jeans with a removable bib. I could do that. I don't know. I have to think about that. Cause my husband really does want some overalls. <laughs> you got both. Have you tried them? I also got a binding attachment and I think I got something else and I can't, in the like machine category, I can't think of what it is. Um, I could look at my receipt. It'll be here like March 22nd. We're used to getting things like the next day from them. It's pretty amazing. I didn't know they have a Canadian website. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so um, this blouse is coming along. So we're making this Girl Friday blouse. If you if you, did, if you missed the cutting and the sewing, no worries. Um, 1940s Girl Friday blouse by Decades of Style Pattern. Sorry, it's a little overexposed. It's just the fabric is so dark here. And I want you to be able to see the fabric. Um, Hearts Fabric, which is uh, right, oh, right here, sent us this, this uh, project. <laughs> I know, and I tell you, we're making it fast, exactly. <laughs> Oh, cool, Terry. Oh, I'm excited to hear how it goes then. There's a difference in price in those two as well. I want to know what, what was the other thing I bought. Maybe it's just the binding attachment that I bought, which might not work. Oh, so is that the 2.0 coil one, Libby? Because I was wondering, could I get the 3.0 and use it for both? I am assuming it could work, but it wouldn't be ideal. You know what I mean? So, um, all right, so we all saw me struggle Thursday sewing this, mainly because I um, didn't finish my edges. So if you're sewing this, I did find this right at the beginning, the very front page of the instructions right here, all seams are shown unfinished in the illustrations. Finish each seam as desired as you progress as you progress, sorry. Uh, press each seam as instructed as you go along. All right, that is very, very clearly right there on the front thing. I definitely don't read everything in a pattern. Um, however, I would have really liked to see that at the beginning of the construction details. So that would be my only um, kind of, you know, warning if you're doing this. And I should have known better, right? I mean, I've only started sewing last year, but still I should know better. No, I'm just using. I hope this blouse fits me, Debbie. I'm, I think this size will fit me. I didn't actually look. I just made what size they, they picked. Yours looks pretty big, Libby. It's a, it's a very chunky foot. That foot is like, I was like, what does that do? I'm so intrigued by that stuff. I love Waywack now, but ooh, I just want to, I want to go through their website and rewrite all of it. <laughs> I am so communicative. I would be like, all right, don't, you know, like, like they have a, a binding foot, a, a binding foot. It does not do binding. It is the foot of, that you put on your machine to use a binding attachment. And, and I know that because I had both on my old um, industrial machine and what they do is like one on mine it, it's almost like one half of the presser foot has been sawed off like one of the little there's like two little toes sticking out from my presser foot and it's like this one is a nub 
and it makes room for the attachment to feed under the needle, right? Um, but they call it a binding foot. Very misleading. I'm sure they've returned so many of those. So, yeah. Yeah, you'd like to know how they finished it in the sample on the website. Yes, Debbie, there is a hashtag and it is a Girl Friday blouse, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if, I don't think I've seen one that's more official. That's the one I used and it does look like it's the one they use. There's not a lot, but just look at every photo because they're subtle. Your, your eye is gonna go to some of the more eye-catching ones, but I would look at all of them because there's some solid versions to see it. It's a, they have a binding attachment, but it's, you know, it's like, it's a, it's like a plate thing, you know, like I used to have. It's very affordable. Mine was always like $25. I had a factory when we started using a factory. Um, I was like, well, you have a binding machine, right? And they're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll set one up. It's fine. I was like, all right. And they were like, all right, well, um, how do you want to pay for this attachment? It's $200. I was like, what? Those people, man. I, you know, that is one, like such a good example of people who pretend like they know what they're doing and they don't. And I was like, here, I was like, mine only cost me $25. They're like, oh my gosh, where did you find that? And I sent them a link to a Google search. I'm like, here, it's like, you didn't look for it. They're were, they were like, well, you could either do that or we'll have our, our factory in Thailand make you the foot. I was like, what? And then they were like, oh, we go to Tennessee Attachment. There's a place called Tennessee Attachment that will make any foot you want. You can like spec it out and everything. Um, and I was like, no, how about we just buy this one that works for $25? <laughs> they were like, oh, okay. All right. So I, I, I think um, overlocking the seams would be perfectly appropriate, Michelle. I didn't go that route because like I've been saying, I just feel like using it on the vintage blouse and the lightweight fabric, it wasn't the most ideal thing. That being said, I did set my serger up today. I put the stitch as narrow as I can get it with two needles on it. I'm, I could probably take one more needle off and make it even narrower. I want it kind of like a light, a lighter, um, you know, finish. I don't want something too heavy. That being said, I did make the stitching kind of dense. So I might make it less dense. Yeah, Shem. Those guys. So this leads me to something else that happened to me today. And this is, this is probably going to be more of a, not a very fulfilling story for you, but I, you are looking at someone who today got to fulfill one of the things on my bucket list of, you know how we probably all have that short list of people who have wronged us in our life? And they truly did. It wasn't a, they didn't think they wronged you and it could go either way. No, it was truly that they wronged you. And you never really, you didn't really have the skills at the time. You weren't equipped to communicate why it was all wrong and how, what you could do to write it, what you, you tell them how you feel, whatever it was. This thing happened to me when I was 17. And this person has even been chummy with my parents. Um, and I, um, I am selling something on Facebook Marketplace right now on my serger. And I don't understand how to use Facebook Marketplace. I did it successfully a couple, or like a year, last year, and I had really good luck with it. And I actually probably need to get some advice from you guys because I didn't know I was getting contacted when I, when I used Facebook Marketplace. I was like, dang, this didn't really work. And then I figured out that I had gotten like 25 messages. Do you guys remember that when I said that? And I felt terrible. Cause like for a week people were like, all right, do you have it or not? And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know all these people had contacted me. I was selling like, two machines, a dress form, and a couple chairs, all stuff from the factory. So this time I'm like, okay, I don't want that to happen again. But how did those people contact me? I don't remember, I don't know how it was. Maybe it was through Messenger, something I've never downloaded before. So I downloaded it out of paranoia yesterday, right? And then I um, was poking around a little bit on this morning, like, all right, so is this where people contact me? I still can't figure out if that's where they contact me. So I need to know from you guys, if you've sold stuff on Facebook Marketplace, if I'm on the, my phone, where am I gonna get notified? I wanna know that. So anywho, I was poking around in there and there's a strange section called something like, I don't know, it didn't look like 
it didn't say messages that are spam, but I clicked it and there was this mess, um, things that, um, they didn't contact me about because maybe they weren't people I was friends with, you know, like they're just people who messaged me. And then there was a spam thing. I clicked the spam thing and in there, there were six messages. One of them from Eliza in chat. Eliza's not here. Sorry, Eliza. I'm just, we all, we worked it all out, whatever it was we were talking about at the time, but I feel terrible about that. But one from this person who wronged me say from 2014, he contacted me in 2014 and he was like, Hey, how is it going? <laughs> and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And so I finally had the moment that we all hoped for. And I was just like, let me tell you what I think of you. You are not a good person. You did all these things. You didn't tell your mother. So when I ran into your mother, she was rude to me and gave me dirty looks when I was like, hi, how are you doing? It felt so good. <laughs> it felt so good. So it made me go, where's my list? I want to tick more off. I have like, you know, three or four. It's not bad, but anyway, <laughs> that's my, that's why I'm so upbeat today. Cause I had one of those moments. So anyway, Okay, so, well, I know I have Facebook on my phone. I don't have mess Messenger is the app. Okay, so I need Messenger. Okay, good to know. Yeah, okay. I didn't have Messenger last year either. So I had to do it on my desktop. Okay, good. Okay, you're all saying Messenger. That's great. I'm in the right place. I will definitely make sure I keep opening it. Yeah, Terry, yeah, for me. I even like record, like took a little screen recording of the conversation. It, we didn't, he didn't, hasn't replied. He probably won't. <laughs> but um, I um, sent it to my mom and my mom was like, wait a minute, that's what was happening? I was like, how do you not know this? It was great. It was such a good thing. Urgh. I even showed my husband and I was, I was like, showed it to him. And then he, I was like, high five me. <laughs> he was like, yeah. He's like, I can't believe you went through this. I'm like, me either. Yeah, you have one of those, Shim? Yeah, I have a couple more. But you know, the, this is my thing is that I'm very um, confrontational, but I'm not very good at it. I'm very ungraceful about it. I will just say exactly the facts. I don't sit, I don't like go for your dog. I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, and this is this and this. I just stick to the facts. I'm very, very good like that, right? I stick to the facts. I keep it to what it is. Um, however, I also know that I shouldn't seek it out. Like just because it's on this list of things, I'm like, it, like I, it's not like a written list. <laughs> I'm not that bad. But you know, I have this little list and it's just like, there's a few things I just feel like I know people think differently of what really happened. And I'm just like, well, if they don't care to find out what really happened, then I, I don't really want to invite them in my life. And so I don't seek it out. But I was always like, this is, this is so telling. This guy has never reached out to me, but he's, he would show up at my parents' house and be like, hey, how's it going? You know? And I'd be like, what? You're talking to him? And they're like, yeah, he's so nice. You know? And I'm like, oh, okay. I see what's happening here. They don't know. You know? So. <laughs> oh, nice. That's cute, Shem. Ah. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's get to the sewing. That's not why you're here. I share some personal stuff here, but not a whole lot. <laughs> I'm just having one of those really wonderful yay, yay me days. So, and I probably need to get a glass of water. I'm really just procrastinating sewing this because I'm scared, a little scared. No, I'm just teasing. All right, so, so far we've constructed some of the collars. So we have Shim, this is such a project you would love nerding out on, I think. I think this one goes here. We have this one here. Uh, right? Yeah, like, like this. This is so interesting. So I think, does it really go like this? This is the, um, this is the top collar, right? 
middle collar. And then we have our bottom collar. There's three collars. And then we have back neck facing. So we're going to assemble our, our back collar here. I'm going to make sure everything is notched. We have a bow tie right here. We have a small circle here. It's rare you see things pinned, huh? Hey, Ray, how's it going? Like a Sheldon enemy list, right? It's not as a, as a, um, diabolical. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ray. I'm glad you're prevailing in the computer fight. Nobody, I don't know anyone who likes fighting with their computer. All right, so this is the right side. I'm just making sure I keep track. The right and wrong side is a little tricky to see. This is this beautiful um, Italian fabric from Hearts Fabric. It's linked in the description if you're interested at all. Um, and maybe we, oh, I kind of want, isn't this funny that I can't get one collar to both have the colorful side up. They're both dark. Um, it's linked in the description. It is, they have a really beautiful array and they're on sale right now. They just put them on sale. And then um, I think they're 15% off. So it's better than our discount, which is right here, but you can use this discount for everything else that they sell. And thanks to Hearts for sending us this project. This is really fun. I know I'm not doing the best, I'm um, giving it the best justice, but um, I promise I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing it on too. All right, so we're gonna go around this short straight edge and the swoopy edge. I've been monkeying around with my stitch length and stuff on something else. Oh, that's nice, Shem. <laughs> I think it's hard to respond to all the, the comments on a video, but uh, that, that would kind of drive me crazy if I couldn't. I would probably get someone to help me with it. Do you think that's um, not not as um, authentic? All right, so you just go down to the circle. There's a little circle right here on the collar. Oh, hello, Ashley, welcome. So there, you see this little circle? It just starts, stop sewing right there. Yeah, I think that's the rule of rule of thumb. I know that's a terrible expression. Um, the only respond for, from the first 24 hours. I think some only do it for the first 20 minutes, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not using a fusible interfacing. I'm just using this sheer, what, what I think is Batiste instead. All right, Terry, thank you. Good luck on the Fairfield. Good for you. All right. I'm so excited about that denim. I've wanted to make some jeans from spoon flower denim for a long time. Pretty excited about it. I ended up getting the dogwood denim, which I think is I think that's their heaviest weight as far as like apparel fabrics go. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna trim this down. This is the ASMR portion because, oof, trimming through this fabric, all these layers is so satisfying. I 
I vacuumed in here today. It's like a whole new world. You gotta love it when you're vacuuming and you think you've removed all traces of the junky snack that one time you bought and ate and no one knows about. And then you're like, oh, there's a petrified um, Cheeto right there underneath my presser, my foot pedal. Great. If I would have died, they would have known I was eating Cheetos. <laughs> Just eating, I, I eat stuff like that. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like you have that like, oh, look, there's a petrified uh, piece of candy that uh, I said the last one was gone of. <laughs> Apparently I didn't sew on my machine after I put my thread in today. That's what that long thread was. It was me. Like, you know, usually I sew a little bit on some fabric. I got the dogwood. Hi, Carrie, I was just thinking about you. How are you doing? You got the knit print and the dogwood. That'll be really nice. I think like any kind of, um, oh, the screen's kind of bright, huh? Is that better? Um, any kind of textured fabric and the knit print really makes it look like knitting. This right here is the, uh, it's 100% viscous crepe from Hearts fabric. They got the all these one of a kind Italian fabrics in. It's a pretty amazing list of fabrics that they have. Uh, and this is one of them. They wanted to highlight them with this project. So yeah. It's in the description. If you if you go to that link, I think then it'll also recommend other Italian prints by them. You can just check them out what they are. And then I think if you just go to their homepage, it's featured at the top right now. They're pretty into them right now. This wasn't ideal. This is what I, I said this the other day, using that little thread pull method would be great for something like this. All right, we can iron these. Yeah, how are you, Carrie? Flights just constantly change now. You know what, that happened to my husband too. You sorted your waistband and got the buttonhole and button done on my jeans today. Awesome, Fiona. Fiona, are yours the polka dot um, sew over it pants? You found a Pringle chip on your desk last week. <laughs> oh yeah, you have a toddler with petrified food. Yeah, but with toddlers, it, it might still be gooey because it marinated in their mouth for a while too, you know? All right, so let's uh, iron this. Ooh, I haven't had Pringles in a while, um, but you know baked, like baked potato chips, which, you know, you're supposed to feel like they're a little healthier and they probably aren't. It's like a, a veggie burger. Veggie burger has almost the same number of calories as like a, a regular burger, you know? So if you're, if you're eating a veggie burger for calories, then you might as well just pick what you want. But if you're doing it for other reasons, then you pick the veggie burger, right? But um, you know those baked chips, like potato chips, that I like, like ba regular old brands like Lay's? Those to me taste like Pringles. I love eating them. Yeah, that's awesome, Fiona. I'm so excited to see them. Oh God, fig bars. Those things are so sticky. God, but they're such a good treat. <laughs> I, have a, I have a package of them in my cupboard here. Fig Newtons, mmm, yum. When I was a kid, my mom used to make these date bars and they had like, like the kind you bake in the oven and they had like an oat crust. Oh, they were so good. And you know, I think about like why I really liked them. Cause the date, the date and the oat, but it, it, the oats were the, like the like top oat topping was kind of salty a tiny bit. It's that salty sweet thing I just absolutely love. All right, so I have my iron set to wool, so that's why it's taking a little bit to iron it. But I think you could put it on a little slightly higher. I 
Well, are they changing your flights so much that it changes your, your plans? Because that would be terrible. Yeah, my, my husband's starting to get back into the whole travel thing, you know, right now. And um, he's been definitely running into stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. Aisha, you traveled a lot too, didn't you? All right. Marlon, how's it going? Hey, Suzanne. Now, <laughs> your snacks. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't want to eat the snacks we're talking about, though, because they're petrified and dusty and covered in thread fluff. You know, because you find them under your, your foot pedal. I found something else, though. What was it? Was it the bobbin? No. I only found five pins, and they were all under my machine. So I feel like that's completely success, uh, acceptable because under my machine, it probably fell under there while I was streaming, and I couldn't, you know, reach under there to grab it. But... Only one of them was on the edge of the carpet. So I feel like that's a win, you know? I'll take it. Oh, that's right, your wife travels. Yeah. Pinwheel cookies with dates, coconut, and pecans. Oh, that sounds really good. You know what's funny about my grocery store is they mostly have they only have sweetened coconut, not unsweetened. So, I, and I use coconut in my granola recipe. Um, so it's kind of a bummer. I have to go to a whole, I have to find it, you know? All right, so these, we're gonna pin these so that we remember these are the very bottom. Those are pressed flatter. Okay, so these are the very bottom ones. Um, let's not pin right in the middle. <laughs> You know. Oh, yeah, that doesn't sound fun, Carrie. Yeah, you want to know. You want to know. All right, so let's see here. This is the top collar right here. This is the top. So this is the one. This is kind of, you know, you got to keep your head on straight. So this is the one that's going to show. So you're wanting to print, pin your collars behind it. Right? And we need to match our notches. So this one goes to... Right, so that's the, um, let me think about this. I think I'm thinking too hard about this, you know? So these double notches go there, like this. So I'm gonna match double notches to the middle and bottom collar. Right? Your bottom just ran out. I always have a spare like sitting here, one ready to go, just in case that happens. And then I want to, I want to, no, this isn't right. Let me think about this for a second. I'm too keyed up. <laughs> so this is the bottom one, right? Okay, bottom. Middle, let's do this more logically. Middle, why are all these dark on that side? Middle, and then this one, is the top. So this is how it goes like this, all right. And we want to met, we want to line up single notches to single notches. I'm just having trouble finding the single. There it is. Okay, single notch right here. Okay. 
Oh, you do. I'm curious, Carrie. How's it going? Yeah, that's right. I like to get it, Shem. I like to get it from Trader Joe's, but um, that's not very close to me anymore. Oof. All right, and then um, this one goes here. You line up your... Okay, so it, does, this, does this look like I'm hand sewing right now? So one of the finishing aspects of this is that you hand stitch, you turn under this edge and you hand stitch it to the collar. <laughs> I did switch to live chat today. Thank you for reminding us. I watched a, a, a Lisa Bardo live stream yesterday. That was kind of fun. I said hi and talked a little bit in there. I was hoping I'd run into some of you. She does um, drawing um, live streams for her brushes on Pro and Procreate. <laughs> it's not sewing related. All right, so this is the underside, right, of the, wait, did I do this right? I keep doubting myself. Yeah, this is the underside, all right? So when this is all hand sewn here, it's gonna look like this. Ooh. Yeah, you did. Yeah, the, it's culotte, Winslow, Winslow culottes. Is that um, Helen's closet? All right, let's pin this one. All right, so we're going to single notch. This is a very stretchy edge here. There it is. Where's it on here? Oh, here it is, okay. Here it is. I just lost it. Oh, there, right there. I'm gonna pin all this. I'm gonna make sure it's actually symmetrical to the other one before I do anything. Um, only cause it's um, unraveling, but we can explore that. Cause I was thinking before I started today, I was like, well, why couldn't you just clean finish that? You know, like why couldn't you have sewn around these three sides? All right, Shem, have a good one. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna line up our double notches on this one. And you're also matching like uh, medium circles and bow ties and squares, and that's probably over here. So maybe we can look at some of that. So this one has a, a bow tie right here, which is right here. Let me just take a quick gander. Okay, so this can go over more like this. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That it has the seam allowances printed directly on the pattern. Is that because it's only in one size? Because uh, I feel like the reason we don't see that is because, you know, it would be such a jumble. Um, I kind of want to make sure. So this one has, I think these, the square right here.
Hmm. Okay, so I need to pull this one out more. Okay. Tedious, tedious. I don't, I, I wonder if you could make this a, a button fly, but this part right here would be tricky with that. Okay, so this is, yeah, so this one's not lined up quite the same. No, 10 sizes are a little grayed out. It is a bit tricky with the projector. Oh, nice. I'm thinking about my projector and getting it kind of going. Can you believe that this whole side is dark? And this side's all print? What are the odds of that happening? Probably more than I think it would. Okay, so let's look at this here. So we have this one right here, line it up. And then we have, so it goes to right there. Let's just mark it on here, right? And then we have this one. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Okay. Now we have this one. <laughs> Bow tie. And where's your bow tie? Oh, way over here. Okay, which is about right here. Taylor's tax would have been very useful for this one. Hmm. More like that. I know you're all wondering, is she really going to hand sew all that? Yeah, Debbie. Oh, you know, Carrie, that the patterns are on their website. Is that what you're talking about? I'm trying to understand what you're saying. The, um, I don't think that their, pa their magazine, their magazine could be printed, a print version. Actually, it might be, uh, but it's also Australian. So finding it here in the States might be a little tricky. But their patterns are on their website. So like when I did the Paddington top, I don't subscribe to the magazine. I just donated, I gave them like $3 and uh, got the pattern. You don't have to, it's free. They're on their website, all of them are free. You don't even have to be a, a um, subscriber. It's pretty generous. Okay, so let's just do some uh, hand sewing. I thought Hearts Fabric liked me. <laughs> All right, so tell me a story if you want to tune out and come back and you know, a half hour. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I think they do too. 
I was, I was, um, okay, here, I'm going to show you my, my little th thread threading trick. Okay. So I usually, oh, I can't see it. I learned this from these women that, um, used to do hand sewing jobs at the uh, place where I rented an office out. They had like this incubator and it was called the textile design center. So anybody in like textile related businesses could rent an office there for an affordable amount it was like um, helped by the city, right? With funding and stuff. And I think it was like welfare to work programs, things like that at the time, that's what they were called. And there was this um, group of Hmong women there who did um, hand sewing for people. And they were right next to me and I loved hanging out with them. And one of the tricks they taught me was to take your thread, fold it in half. You see, here's my loop of thread, it's folded in half. And then I, th I thread the two cut ends through the needle, right? And so now I have this loop here. This is great when you're starting. If you're gonna only sew halfway and then have to start again, then it doesn't work for the second time. And then um, you have a slip knot when you start. So then you don't have to tie a knot. So you just go through it like that and now you're ready to go, which is kind of nice because it's low profile and fast. The other trick I learned from them, especially with sewing on buttons, is to do like eight strands of thread and only go through twice. So that was a definitely a time-saving tip that I have loved knowing for years. And I and I and like like I wanted to rebel against that and be like, but no, everything taught me that I shouldn't do that. I was still kind of stuck half in and half out of this world of what's proper, what's, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and um that is definitely one thing where I started going, well, why? Why do you have to do this a, this certain way, you know? Let me zoom in for you. So I'm just going to do a whip stitch, and I'm hoping I'm catching all my layers, too, because this is kind of going to finish it. If you are folding under these, oops, these uh, layers. Oh, shoot, I just grabbed only one thread when I pulled. Now I have kind of a mess. Um, let me get this sorted out and I'll show you why you want to make sure. I should have waxed this, but my, my thread wax is at home. This is the worst thread I could be hand sewing with too. It's kind of uneven. It's hard to thread in the needle. Come on. Well, you can't sew through all layers though, Nancy, it would show on the outside. I mean, I guess you could pinch it. <laughs> Wait a minute, now I wanna think about how I could actually, this, I just, <laughs> I just totally ruined this. Oh my God. Okay, let me focus this time. Ay, ay, ay. How's this project going, Sarami? Well, it could be going better if, um, I was taking more care with it. All right, let me get some nicer thread. Mm. Okay, so when you're turning this under, right, you wanna make sure you're turning it under all layers of your collar. So say you only catch this layer of the collar, what'll happen is it'll pull out under there. Those other two layers will be loose no, I'm just catching the, this is the outer collar. I'm on the under collar right now. So I'm only catching the bottom layer of the collar under it. <laughs> you know, did you know that you guys can clip now? Oh, is it not there? Oh, I don't see it. Oh yeah, it's right here for me. It's a highlight video. <laughs> I saw in Lisa Bardot, she had a little pair of scissors. So you can, so in like on um, other popular streaming platforms, you can do a clip. And it's like a, like 20 seconds or 40 seconds or three minutes, you know, depending on, it's not very long. Um, and then you can do that, like post it as a highlight. 
You know, you don't want to catch the outer layer, just the under layer. Yeah, so I'm wondering though, what if I picked this up? Would you guys hate me if I didn't hand sew? I just, can I just try something? <laughs> I'm gonna try something. You guys are gonna hate me. Or you're gonna love me so you don't have to hand sew this. Make sure you have sharp pins. Oops, I just spit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I do it though? It's a little narrow. It might not be worth the risk. I mean, I could sew. Let's see. I think I could do it. I'll try one. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy, we are team. Um, no hand sew. Okay, let me find my opening here. You have to make sure that you've pinned it really good so you can trust where you're sewing. Otherwise, uh, you might get it um, askew. So hand sewing is going to be more accurate, I think. This doesn't feel great, to be honest. Like it's, it's um, feels kind of hard, too hard. I might stop right here. I don't want to just, I don't want to distort it. You know what I mean? But there we go. I got it on there. See, there's your raw edge though. So I think, um, so it's okay, I guess, that you have raw edges here, except for the fact that they will unravel. And no one's gonna see it, right? Because this is, this is your top collar. This is the way it looks, right? And so there's the raw edge right under there. But look, see, this is, these are unravel threads from my raw. So you probably should finish this edge somehow. Yeah, it, totally, Libby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so this this I think is why I I would probably sew this edge right sides together. Um, all right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm just going to trace my outline on this collar here where this goes. I'm going to take this off. It's probably too late. But could I just sew these two layers together, you know, this along this raw edge? Right here. If, you, if I had done this before I did that machine sewing, it'd be easier. Okay, don't get that collar point in there. Oh, I feel like I'm not lined up very well. Let's take, let's just make sure. We don't want our collar not to lay flat. We're just experimenting. If you were making this, how could we make this easier and faster? Um, I know not everything needs to be easier or faster, but it is kind of nice to kind of test the limits and see, you know, what could we do? Because what if you just don't like doing some, some type of step? 
All right, so we're just gonna match these raw edges right here. Ouch, there's a pin right there. Bad pin, okay. All right. So now, is this the one? Yeah, that's the one, okay. <laughs> All right, so now it still needs to be hand sewn down, but now this one is finished. This edge is finished, right? So now I just need to line it up there. I would do that for sure. So let's go back and do that on these right here so that um, the hand sewing will be faster in the long run. And we know that this won't come undone, you know? And we'll save ourselves time by giving us this little outline. <laughs> you, let's see, I need to make sure I remember which one goes where. Um, <laughs> I love like embroidery. I think it's amazing. I'm not doing a 5 8 seam, by the way, here. I'm just doing like a 3 8 inch seam. Trim this a little bit here. This is, remember, this edge isn't seen um, on the outside of the garment. Is this, uh, yeah. All right, so here we go. So that'll, that one will go on top of this one here. I'm gonna iron this right now so I don't lose track of which is which. All right, Fiona, good luck with your, or you finished your pants, right? Congrats. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set this over here so I know that that one goes there. <laughs> and now this is the other clean edge that I just sewed on the very first one to try it out. This is the right side. All right. <laughs> Embroidery, I have a machine for that. <laughs> Who needs an app for everything? You've got a machine for it. <laughs> All right, now this one here, let's, um, okay, hmm. We have these pins here, we kind of want those, but you know what, we'll just use chalk. This is, this is the underside. And my chalk is pretty good about coming off too. It's just, this probably won't get, you know, washed before it's on display at the shop. All right, so let's put this right sides together. Line up these raw edges. 
So these are the raw edges that we are supposed to turn under and just hand sew on the underside of the collar, which we're probably gonna still do. But now they won't come unraveled. And, and you, you probably were supposed to finish them somehow, maybe like with the overlock or something. Are you asking Michelle, Michelle, uh, asking Nancy, Michelle? I mean, embroidery machines are pretty amazing. I worked somewhere where we had, um, I think it was a 10, we had two five head embroidery machines. That's not nearly as big as they can get. They can get pretty big. It might've been two 10 head machines. I can't really remember. And uh, they would have them all going at, this, at one time. It was pretty like amazing to watch. Okay, so this is the X goes there, right? Yep. This is a lot easier to hand sew now too. Look at that. I have this nice clean edge, All right? I don't have to turn anything under. This one goes here. Look how nice that looks. I am pleased with this change. Um, let's get this lined up better. We're still lining up notches and stuff. We're not changing any of that. All right. And so this one is goes right here. Is this looking um, symmetrical? It's looking twisted. <laughs> Let's line this up, make sure it's looking pretty symmetrical. <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom it out just a tiny bit so I can look at it on the screen. Okay. This point needs to come out more like that. This one could come in a tiny more, but we've already sewed this one, sewn this one right here. Okay. Chook, chook. So this one I'm gonna go out a tiny bit to match this side. And then our notches are still lined up. All right, that looks pretty good to me. All right, so let's tame the embroid the hand sewing again. All right, so I got nicer thread. Uh, I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you're on Instagram, Michelle. I feel like you are, but I just posted my, are you in the, are you in the guild? I asked recently about like <laughs> uh, old works in progress that are kind of like, like we all have a few, right? But there's like some that I feel more pressure, more guilt about, kind of give me the side eye. <laughs> and so I posted mine, which was embroidering the March top by Helen's Closet. No, I didn't rearrange. You're right, it's not, is it? Oh, but we're seeing it from the back side. So it might be on the right side. I feel like this side's the, yeah, all dark side. Yeah, that's why. Um, and uh, I even posted on Instagram yesterday. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is my, my project. Yeah, so I had, I'm gonna start right here since I have my nice little tail. I'm gonna do my little slip knot. But yeah, I had this, you know, oh, I'm going on a road trip. I'm going to hand um, embellish this whole yoke on this green thread on white linen. You know, I'm keeping it simple with one color. Um, had this whole, I designed this whole like ambitious stitch design in Procreate <laughs> and then transferred it with uh, a yellow washable Crayola marker 
Um, got all loaded up in the car. We were visiting where my daughter wanted to move <laughs> and um, didn't realize it, but between the house and the car, my water bottle had gotten my project wet and it, you know, it erased the whole design. Like it just washed off. Those Crayola markers work really good, even on white fabric. And so um, <laughs> it kind of sat in the naughty pile. I still stitched it for the whole trip because I was like, well, I don't have anything else to do. I don't bring a lot of projects with me. But that just posting that in the guild made me get it back out. I took a photograph of it, put it back in Procreate kind of used the design I've already stitched on there, added more to it. <laughs> yep, embroidery mishap. It was more like a, a water mishap, you know. All right, so I'm just taking big stitches. I doubt you can see them, but I'm just kind of catching the edge, all of the layers on the collar and one of the layers that it's being stitched to. They don't have to look pretty because it is on the underside. My like basic hand sewing isn't too bad, but you know, my embroidery is really terrible. Okay, this I'm coming to that spot that I've already sewn with the machine. All right, and so now I'm gonna end right here. And I just go a few loops like this. Sometimes I tie a knot and sometimes I don't. This time I'm probably not going to. What I do is I'll take my needle and kind of run it in between the layers and pull out right here. <clears throat> Tug on it a little bit to make it snap back underneath. There we go, and so there's my first one, but I do have this raw edge on this one, unfortunately, that I'll probably think about how to deal with later or leave it as a cautionary tale. <laughs> that, oh, so that is one of the things that she wants, she was hoping people would do on that March top Libby. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally your jam. I sucked you back in. Uh, yeah, so one of her envisioning, like, hopes, hopes for people doing the march top was that they would embellish the yoke. Kind of like, um, yeah, like a folk top. Yeah, the first, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to embroider the whole yoke on that. And then when she started doing like marketing things after that, like she didn't heavily market the March top when she first released it. And then she kind of did later on and she talked about that and I was like, oh, see, I totally saw that. And you know, maybe that was a very obvious conclusion, you know. I haven't. Yeah, I can get down a, a very much a embroidery rabbit hole. One of my favorite, I can't remember who it was, but they did, this was a long time ago, they would do a postcard, a hand embroidered postcard of a place they visited, like a landscape. It's like, oh, that's so cute. Oh, that doesn't look like this one over here at all. Let's not put that willy nilly on there. Okay, single notch right there all the single notches. All right, there we go. Let's do one more pin. It's nice when it, you don't have to hold it together. Only three more to go, you guys. <laughs> single layer on this and then all the layer, but I now I don't have to worry about catching all the layers because of it's finished. So I just need to catch it, which is, makes it a little easier. Yeah, she's posted a few Libby that people have done that too. that are really inspiring. 
it definitely made me pick it back up a couple times and go, okay, I'm going to add a little bit to it, you know. And now that I've kind of come up, come up with a plan, oh man. Make your tail longer so that doesn't happen. It's so dry here, look at that. I've chipped my nail just trying to hand sew. I have to put lotion on my nails. You know, like I put it on my hands and I make sure I get it on my nails. That's why they get so cracked sometimes, you know? It's so dry here. I just finished, okay, so Libby, the, regarding the licorice, <laughs> um, I've finished the least salty box in the um, box that Malin gave me and those raspberry ones. I'm not sure I'll be able to do the other salty ones, but I'll try them. Um, and then my favorite was the bag of the... Um, cylindrical ones those are my favorites I love that kind and then I just finished the fence ones the fish the salty fish yesterday which isn't really that salty they were just like sugared salt you like my cattails you know why I did that this is this is so lame for some reason when I started, I couldn't figure out what to draw, right? Because that's my, my plague. I'm like, I don't know what to draw here. And then I just started like thinking of something like a marsh. There used to be this beautiful marsh and bird sanctuary where I used to live. And so I did that, you know, and I was like, oh, this, this is okay. I mean, cattails, I don't know. And then I was like, yeah, let's just go with it, right? And then I realized I thought that top was named Marsh Top. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was marsh top and so I was subliminally doing a marsh themed embroidery for my marsh top which was actually the march top <laughs> yeah the mullen the fit of that is a little bit of a struggle I know hi Matilda how's it going I know the salty is very Swedish and Finnish it's so funny because and Dutch, yeah. Um, I like salty foods, but the, I'm not a big fan of the salty licorice. Okay, so this side's done. We're done on this one. Oops, this lost pin. Look at that. And look, this is the clean finished one. That's so much nicer. Okay. I feel good about that change. All right, so let's do this one here. Two more, and then we'll be back to the sewing part of it. And then we're going to be into the, the binding part of it. Um. <laughs> I love black licorice I like the salmiac rock whatever that is I like that I like salmiac I don't even know how to say it but I like that stuff that's about as salty as I get usually my mom gave me a little bag of cats um, the other day and I like I like the cats but they can vary and these were kind of fresh and so they tasted really good sometimes they're just so hard I, I don't mind it being hard and lasting a long time but sometimes I'm just like you know I want to eat another one yeah I, I, yeah exactly Libby and at least now my marsh top my marsh top doesn't look like a marsh top. It looks like a marsh top, but it's not a marsh top. Like, at least it's not so meta, you know, or, or literal. <laughs> at least it looks more creative. <laughs> Red vines. Where are you from in California, Shim? I grew up in Orange County, block next to Disneyland. And then my mom got remarried. We moved to the high desert. And then I moved back to Orange County when I went to fashion school. This is a lot faster. Ugh, 
so bad at this though. Now I don't have to worry about those edges. Yeah, the cats get stuck in my teeth, yeah. Pantery is a sweet minty kind of salty set. I like the minty stuff too. I didn't know that's what it was called. I don't know how to say that. Oh, Petaluma. I know where Petaluma is. There used to be a yarn store that I sold to there called um, The Knittery in downtown Petaluma. Big brick store. Every year, you probably know this, every year she used to have baby chicks in the window. <laughs> Not even knitting related, but you know, the town loved it. Okay. This will all get in the um, seam allowance of the neckline, which is nice. One more, you guys hanging in there. One more. All right, I do love red vines though. Like when I go to the movie theater, I have a tough time picking between red vines and peanut M&Ms. Those are my, those are my uh, go-tos. I want all, of, I used to be super frugal. I haven't been to the theater in years, I have to say. Yeah, chicken mecca, hey Barbara. I love Sebastopol, Barbara. I think it's cute. I haven't been there in years, like a, like a, like a long time. So maybe I shouldn't say that, but, um, yeah, I used to go to the movies and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to smuggle stuff in. You know, I was like doing that. My mom though, when I was a kid, you know, single mom, it was just me and her, she would bake cookies and make popcorn and we'd smuggle it in. It might've even actually been okay then. I'm not sure. Um, and, uh, that was like such a normal thing that she would always bake cookies. I don't know if she did both, but, and, and uh, then when I got older, I started being like, you know what? This is like, yes, it's expensive to do this, but I don't do anything else. I don't go out. I don't go to bars. I don't do any of that. And so I started making it like, a, like a, like a date and a treat for myself, you know? And so I would um, do it all get a soda and a popcorn and a treat, totally have a tummy ache for the rest of my day. So, yeah. Oh, maybe that's why she did the, the little baby chicks. This is so dark, this fabric, it's hard for me to see. This is no Bernadette Banner stitching, is it? <laughs> I love that um, I used to worry, like I used to think about this being hanging inside Hearts Fabric, you know, the store and people like scrutinizing it. I'm sure they do that. Um, it used to bug me, now I'm like, whatever. Oh yeah, an Occidental. What a strange name for a town, but that town's really cute. I feel like some of those like Sebastopol and Occidental are some of the last holdouts for becoming these really populated, expensive um, San Francisco suburbs that I knew of, because I didn't grow up here, up here, you know. No hot soups or smelly stuff. Is that, a, is that like a written rule? No hot soups, that's, I get the smelly stuff. But the hot soups make sense. People trying to eat hot something hot <laughs> over their lap. <laughs> okay. Let's take these out. Almost like two inches. Two inches. 
And we can sew. In my head, this was going to happen after the garment was done. And you know, truthfully, because I stitched this, I finished that edge, I actually could have done this off camera. I didn't have to make you sit through it just now. Um, but when it was a raw edge, I knew that I couldn't do that. I had to, I would have had to at least do it for like right here for an inch, you know? So, um, oh, well, I'm glad it's done. Of course it came unthreaded right at the end. Cause what's my least favorite thing to do on camera? Probably have a coughing fit, but, um, threading, threading a needle. Least favorite thing to do. Oh my gosh, there's a critter down there. Freaked me out. Last night we had, we had this trail cam and it faces the back of our house. So the back of our property is, I want to say, it's really close. It's, you know, it's like two car lengths the way. Um, so we have a trail cam on the back gate facing our house because the animals love to go through there. And they, they're usually just on their way somewhere. Probably the eat our, our dogs, but they don't luck out there. So um, last night we had a coyote, a fox, and a bobcat. We had the holy grail of predators. <laughs> we had all three. There was probably a rattlesnake in there and a mountain lion at the edges, and then we would have had all five. <laughs> okay, now this feels nice and stable. Look at that, you can kind of move it around. It's very obvious which is the top and which is the bottom. So here is how it looks finished. Imagine if I saw some of my stitches. I was kind of worried I flipped it over. It looks pretty good. Oh, no red vines, no popcorn, nor peanut M&Ms. Or apples. That's what was hard for me. Ookily dokily. So I need this edge is like a like peeking out the um, under collar. But this is what it's gonna. This is the back side and the stitches. So I just did a loose running stitch. That's it. All right. So um, I'm going to finish the front edge of my blouse on the serger. I'm gonna cave on that front. I'm gonna try one layer on my serger and see how it's looking. Come on, get, my foot pedal won't reach the ground, here we go. one layer. It's kind of dense. I just don't think that looks very nice, you know? But it'll work. You know what? I had this little lever right here pushed toward me I could not figure out why my stuff kept folding the edge. I kept loosening my tensions. I kept doing all kinds of stuff. I realized I had knocked this little lever right here and it's a, the rolled hem feature. Um, I, I don't have to worry about the cats right now, uh, Nancy, because I only have one now. I lost two cats last year, not to predators. And so the um, one that I have right now, otherwise known as the troll under the bridge or bed. He's basically taken up residence in my master bedroom, in the bedroom I sleep in. And he lives under the bed and comes out occasionally. <laughs> oh, now my, now I'm getting loops. Come on, why do you have to do that to me? I just adjusted it all for one layer. But yes, I, I would worry about it. Oh wait, my husband said he didn't see the bobcat. He saw that cat we saw the other day. So they were probably looking for that guy. 
but yes, they the um, small animals frequently don't last if you leave them outdoors constant, you know, like 100%. We always brought our cats in at night. So yeah, gotta watch that. Yeah, I think you're right, Ray. <laughs> Critters are not your thing, Terry. Oh, I bet you're better than you think. Are you the kind of person, Terry, that animals love you and you're like, why are you getting near me? Go away. Yeah, Shim. So the day I got my braces off, I brought a pair. I remember it really well. I couldn't wait. I could not wait to bite into a pear or an apple. <laughs> I brought an apple, I think. Maybe it was a pear. I said pear, so I think it's a pear. Oh, have I seen or used the Clover Desk needle, needle Threader? No, let's pull it up. Clover Desk Needle, oh. Um. Let's check it out. Today we have the needle threader by Clover, which is a really handy tool that helps us thread our needle. Sometimes as we age, our eye-hand coordination isn't the same as what it used to be. Are you saying I'm old? Threading the needle for hand sewing can become a frustrating. Okay, just show us. With this, it makes it really easy to do. Simply by taking our thread and placing it right here in the slot that says thread slot. And then using our hand sewing needle, positioning it with the eye down, we drop it into the needle slot. The next process is to use this tiny lever here and simply press down. And as we do that, a tiny little rod goes across here and inserts the thread into the needle. And then we can pull Oh my gosh. And as you can see, we've got this little loop right here. Okay, that that's pretty cool. If I were doing that a lot, oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. I knew it, Terry. I knew pets would like you. Yeah, exactly, Ray, because she's sweet. <laughs> it only takes certain eye shapes. We're all over the place today, Rachel. But you missed all the hand sewing. They can smell the fear. Your hubby, that's not nice there. He's trying to wind you up and then make you afraid. They would smell that. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. So this is what we have so far. All right, so we're gonna lay this on wrong side to right side, right? We're just gonna line this up to the raw edge here. Right. Let's put the center back seam at the of the collar to the center back right here. I've always struggled to thread needles. <laughs> always. <laughs> I mean, is the apron really gonna get used for all that dirty work? <laughs> Okay, I don't see a notch for the the shoulder seam. Did I miss it? No, I would have liked a notch for that shoulder seam. All right, so how does this line up here? What was that noise? Hi, Amy, how's it going? Hi, Elena. You just standard clover needle thread it, but I mostly use that for cross stitch. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I can't use it for my machine. 
And you know, the reason I mostly need it is because uh, I, I'm doing it live on camera. When you guys aren't looking, I can thread my needle without even looking. I know where it's at so well. I can just kind of go boop and it goes through, you know? <laughs> so this is our, it's a, um, okay, one, two, three, four. So it's this little mark here, which I actually marked on my garment. So I'm gonna say that's about five eighths inch down and about an inch, fat inch in from the edge here. So it's about, it's about right here. And so where is it on this collar? Does it drive you crazy that I don't have all these markings on here? Oh, is this it? Is this? That, it's right where the notch is? Okay. Let's see, the not single notch is way up here. Like that? Does it really go down that low? Hmm. That would make sense for how much slack I had right here. Cause look at that. I still have, that fits perfect. Okay, that's it. That sounds perfect. I love container gardening. I'm on a, a war with um, the squirrels right now and my succulents because they are eating them. They go up to those cute little succulents that I've been like nurturing for years and years that have gotten nice and big and they just mow them down. They eat all the little leaves on it or even worse, this is very, very common. They yank out the whole succulent and I find it on the ground, in the bushes, below the deck. <sighs> it makes me so upset. I, I didn't, you know, wasn't the best plant person for a long time, but I've done pretty good with succulents and I have some that are, you know, older. I have this beautiful jade it, it uh, um, ate all of the leaves off of it. <laughs> it's like, wow, really? You know? So this, I think uh, if you're gonna finish your front edge, you might wanna wait till your collar's laying here, then finish that front edge. Cause now look, I have these raw edges right here. <laughs> really, Libby? So is it a projector file though? What are you doing? You're projecting the pattern and then tracing it? I think I'm gonna um, overlock this edge here. I am gonna bind it. I'm gonna bind it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna check it across the, to the other side before I get too far. Let's see how this is looking here. All right, that's fine. Color really adds some oomph, some weight. So here is my seam right here. Here is my seam right here. Are they going to match? That's what I wanna know. Cause look at that inch apart here. So let's make sure that we end at the same spot. They have water. There's a pond, two creeks, a dog bowl, the sprinklers and a bird bath. Yeah, I've wanted a pet squirrel kind of, uh, you know, loosely, but you know, like kind of jokingly ever since I found the this girl is a squirrel account. <laughs> I knew it was never a reality. Two weeks after getting that squirrel feeder, <clears throat> this squirrel has like, oh my gosh, I just found the perfect place. <laughs> so she's making a nest in the vents at the top of our house, the peak of our house. Um, 
And then um, she's been going through every plant on the deck, those ones you see in the pictures. Don't ever look too closely at those because they are looking pretty haggard now. So I have this idea for a design because, you know, there's a sewing solution for everything. Say it after me. And so um, I have this design to make this little mulch mat that fastens to the flower pot a little thin mat just like of all these you know fabrics um kind of st stitched together in layers and then i'm going to elasticize it somehow to the pot <laughs> all right so i'm just kind of looking through here because the i'm not a big fan of how this little edge is right here um because this is a little hard to manage these all these little layers here so when you sew this color, you're going to sew it on and then you're going to sew the center front seam. So that all has to match. <laughs> oh, wait, wet, wet, wet. Rabbits used to get your strawberries. You always trace under paper to make my adjustments. Mm. You might need licorice. I mean, you always need like, yeah. All right, so let's see here. Let's see how my collar's looking. I think that this one here could come down a little bit to match this side like that. All right, let's just pin it there. And then this one here These markings are just long gone for me, so I'm just gonna do it as I see it. All right, so now this one here looks like it's, could be a little shorter. All right. And then this one here could be a little longer. All right. fiddly. All right. I did meet a gal the other day. I think I told you guys this about um, that she's a wildlife photographer. So she was pretty excited by the fact that we get bobcats and the foxes um, have their babies right behind, right by our trail cam actually. So, uh, she, and she sent us a thank you note and it was uh, one of her photographs. So that was kind of cool. And it was a it was a baby fox. It was so cute. Hmm. Well, that's a good idea, Amy. That's awesome, Ray. That's a good idea. No, really, Nancy. Oh gosh, Shem, that's funny. I've done that too. All right, I'm just gonna uh, stitch this down here. And then make sure that it's all going to match. So I can also kind of tame these little funny edges. They're not sewn either because you stop at the um, circle. Okay. see over here. I just want to see it flat, but I can't see it flat. All right, let's see here. Here's my blouse. Oh my gosh, they've got in the last. Yeah, so my husband was um, keeping the squirrel food. He's so cute. Um, my husband, that is. He was keeping it in a, a like a like a resealable container. They chewed the entire container to pieces. And then one day, that looks pretty good. 
I walked out. So we put it in the an old dog food bin or cat food bin. We don't have, we don't need two cat food bins anymore. So we put it in a cat food bin that has a lid that snaps. So it's like a hinged door, you know, like, like, a, like a clear con container. The whole top comes off, but it all snaps all the way around and has a hinged lid, right? So you can dump all the food in there and keep it in there and kind of scoop it out, lift the lid. And he had that out there and I walked out the back door and there was a squirrel fully inside the bin, the door shut and everything, the lid shut on him. He was just full on buffeting in there. And I scared him because I walked out the door and he went pew right out of the bin, which scared me. I was like, whoa, he was in there all the way. He was having a blast. So now we just store it in the house. <laughs> and then he'd come up to the window and be like, um, did you know that there's no peanuts out there? Can you believe there's no peanuts in the feeder? All right. Yeah, you know what I did? I got that pack of zippers from Waywack that is like, is this was a bit, is this a bad idea? I just didn't feel like picking and choosing zippers. And for like $7.50, you got one of every color. You got 28 of them. I was like, deal. I got two packs of those. All right. I'm gonna tack this collar on here. These are all 5 8 inch seams. I'm just tacking it on here to make it a little easier for myself. In general, I like, I'm gonna, since I'm gonna bind this, I would actually like to put the binding on at the same time I was doing this. But because you don't really sew and turn this edge, it's all laying just flat on here. I'm not gonna, you don't really have to worry about that as much. There is a back neck facing. And I think the reason there's a back neck facing is so that, especially like if it's hanging on a hanger, or someone can see inside there, it'll look nice. You just have a seam with the facing turned to the inside. Oh, how is it then, Ray? Oh yeah, Terry, the hummingbirds. I feel like they're the mafia of the bird world. That's what I call them. They're the ones that you don't wanna double cross. Birds are kind of mean to each other too. You ever notice that? They don't like someone that's not them. <laughs> All right, why is this not laying flat here? Oh, maybe it is laying flat. Oh, okay. Let's see here. All right, so I think I'm gonna lay this on my dress form. What do you guys think? Since this is truly like a stream, a, like it's more like a live stream today than ever. It's not a how-to. I'm curious. Ooh. Oh wow, this is cute. Worth it. Oh man, this is really, really cute. Let's see it. Boy. <laughs> so that'll be turned under like that. I've got it a little uneven on the form, don't, don't I? So this is just a center front seam. Can you see the collars? There's the collars. Little sleeves. Here's the zipper. Ouch. Back uh, pleats. Yeah, I do, Michelle. 
Yeah, I get to keep the pattern though, because I'm pretty sure Decades of Style gave it to me, which is really nice. <laughs> they just tell you it's the choice of where you live. I think the collar gets a little lost. This side's not laying down as flat. This one's laying much nicer than this one over here. Let's see. Is this just a, I feel like it's a case of ironing. <laughs> it's okay, Lydia. It's nice that we get to sew. I probably would have never known about this garment or any of this. So it's nice that they send us the projects, right? None of us probably would have known about this one. Very cute. I like this blousing. Do you see it? Can you kind of see it right here? How it's smooth and then blouses like this. The back turned out nice. Exactly. Look at that. Even my backwards hip till. Ooh, it just loves this kind of thing. Hey, well, that's motivation. Yay. I'm going to get a little water. All right. Remove the dress form. Yay. That left collar is made for a pin. Oh yeah, like a, a pretty brooch. Whoops, wrong one. I see me and, and I think it's the right one. It's me and my machine or me and the computer. Okay. So all we have left right now. Oh, I know what foot I bought. I bought a rolled hem foot. Did I really buy that? I think I bought that. I bought a rolled hem foot. <laughs> um, we're gonna bind this here and we're gonna sew the center front seam as well. So let's sew our center front seam. Right sides together. And then we're gonna bind the neckline and do the back facing. We're gonna bind the sleeve openings Oh, corduroy is, it's not just as bad as Belle. It's not that bad. <laughs> Trixie, she is, I know. She's so helpful. Thank you. <laughs> we love her. <laughs> Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, maybe I will make one of these. I think I would pick a solid fabric to make sure you could see the collars. That navy blue one in the hashtags the very first, it's like the bottom of the hashtag. I, I really, that's the one I keep thinking about. Oh shoot, okay. I was just seeing if my collars matched up and I think they do, phew. All right, that is a big seam allowance here. It is so many layers by the way, but it doesn't feel too thick, not with this fabric. Um, I'm gonna take a peek in here even if I just do it with my hand. Let's make sure nothing is folding on itself. Okay. It just feels kind of, you know, thick. You know what dress uh, I saw a picture of the other day? I was scrolling through because you know what I did. Um, I had someone, I don't know if you guys see how me posted on in my stories. I had someone use one of my videos that I posted on Instagram as their own, they didn't use it as their own content. They tagged me, but they didn't repost it. And I was like, why do people do this? And so I actually asked them, I was like, why, why do you do this? Like, this isn't your content. Your name isn't, there's no name on your account. It's my content. You know, why would you post it? And they didn't reply to me. 
And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it taken down. <laughs> so I had to find the original post. I had to scroll down through all my Instagram. And I ran across that decades, decades of style. The night, what was it called? It was another 1940s. Um, I did the long sleeve version, but the, and it had the bib, remember that? And it was gray with the white pinstripes. Oh, okay, Beverly, that's a good idea, I'll do that. I think I got it. I got it for my industrial. All right, I'm kind of nervous to see how this looks. Let's check it out. Let's see how my collar's matched. Yeah, not too bad. It's pretty thick right there. Not too bad. Um, uh -uh. nah, they're trying to get followers. I think what they do is they get the followers and then they sell the account. You know how sometimes you see sewing accounts and you're like, I've never heard of this person. How do they have 10,000 followers? They wait till the account gets there and they sell it and people buy them and they don't admit to buying them. And then they clear out all the content, put their own content on there. And then you're like, wow, <laughs> the dress, it was a dress. I can't remember the name of it, sorry. I don't wanna go looking for it, it might take me a bit. Um, but uh, I think I would like to make that in a, um, like a um, sleeveless version. Okay, so now we have binding. And I have this back facing. So you might want to finish the shoulders of the back facing because your shoulders are already done and there's not a front facing. New England dressed. Yes, that's it. I think I'd like to make that. I ran across it when I was looking for it. I got the post taken down by the way. <laughs> And someone had written this comment under there, there because it was about me sewing buttons with my home machine. And sometimes what I do is I put a pin, I put the button up against it, I use it like a backstop, and then I use my foot. That's sometimes what I do. And someone said, oh, a buttonhole, a button foot would probably be safer. And I was like, come at me, bro. <laughs> I was like, that's my content. Not everybody has a buttonhole or button foot. That's all I said to her. She actually messaged me. She goes, I'm really sorry. I didn't realize that was your content. I, you know, whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm just feeling really snarky right now. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, <laughs> did I mention I'm confrontational? <laughs> I'm very nice. I'm just like, stick to your lane, people, you know? So, um, yeah, I, uh, I got it taken down, but I ran across that dress and I was like, I love the way it looked before I put the sleeves on. The sleeves are cute. Why am I so naive? I know, right? <laughs> I am too, Debbie, don't worry. Okay, so I think we're gonna overlock this edge and use it to uh, hem it, all right? I'm not ending. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna overlock this little edge here. Actually, I'm going to put up the differential. Won't that make it tighter? Wait. Come here, please. Now that there's not all this dust and threads, my uh, foot pedal doesn't have anything to stick to on the ground, because I vacuumed. Okay, maybe, maybe a uh, two, yeah. I'm gonna put the differential to 1.5. I'm kinda, I'm kinda scrunching it a tiny bit. This is exactly the kind of fabric your differential loves to have too. See how slow it was just going? That's because of the differential. So put it back to normal. All right, and so now we have this little, edge here and you see it's kind of slightly rumpled and curling but now I can hem it 
So we're gonna finish this edge here. I should do the shoulders too, to be honest. Let's do the shoulders. Wait, what was that New England dress? That's what it was. I'm not using the differential for this part. I have um, this l l layer of fabric that I'm using as like an interfacing. And it's so thin, you know? All right. Yeah, exactly. About the, like, I think having the more followers. Eh. When I started SoSo, -So, I already had an account with, um, I think 6,000 followers with Chicken Boots. Instagram wasn't as good then either. I mean, it was great, but it wasn't like as big. Did I shoehorn all of my Chicken Boots peeps into SoSo? -So? No, I started off from scratch. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna hem this. Because I did that little differential, I think that'll make it a little easier. This, cause this kind of fabric is pretty tricky to hem sometimes. Yeah, sorry Beverly that that rolled hem foot isn't for my home machine. I wonder if I have something like that, but I don't know. I should consider getting some like that and doing some streams on that. All right, so there, now I have my finished facing. What are you looking for? Seaforths. That does sound familiar. All right. So we're going to put this back neck facing on here. It's kind of hard to tell where I'm at here. This is it. Let's mark the center. Let's trim off this little bit. I didn't get perfectly cut on here. I could just bind the whole neckline, but I do think the facing is kind of nice when you look at the inside, you know? All right, so we're gonna sew this. And at the shoulder, or maybe it goes a little past, oh no, at the shoulder. You could leave it like hanging like this, but I think I'm gonna turn it back like this. Cause when it's turned to the inside, I can line it up to the shoulder maybe. Ooh, actually maybe what I could do if it was like this. No, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, okay. I was thinking about it. Not really using my words very well, sorry. We're going to sew this back neck facing. I kind of want to double check. It says five eighths throughout, but yep. Okay. Maybe I'll double check. <laughs> yeah. Right. Beverly. That's so awesome. Okay. I know for such a unique garment and for such a struggle of a stream. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see here. I don't see any mention of a change in the seam allowance. I just wanna make sure when I put this facing on. I can sleeve edges. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the, um, the, the pattern review videos, I think are doing the best right now. I love some of the conversations I get in with people on those. Sometimes I'm always like, oh, I can tell by the first few words they're upset about my review. And then I read it, I'm like, oh, they're not upset at all. I'm just paranoid.
All right. This one came further this way than the other. Oh, I wanted to turn that back. Oh my God. I'm taking that out a little bit. Drink. I'm gonna turn back this edge here. I don't know. I told you I was gonna do that and then I didn't do it. Habit with the facing, you know? There we go. All right, so we're gonna turn this back like this. It's kind of an awkward uh, angle, isn't it? Like this. That feels so wrong. I don't even feel like I did a very confident five eighths of an inch seam that whole time because I was a little nervous about it. Look at that. This is, oh God, the seam is so bad. Let's um, take out a few stitches here. I'm gonna fold back this end too. Trying not to catch my overlocking. So I'm gonna take out the stitch. Sorry, it's so dark. Probably can't see a thing. I'm just taking out some of the stitches at the end of the seam that I just sewed. So I can fold back this edge and then I can line it up with the shoulders afterward. Let's try and do a better 5 8 inch seam. It does feel really weird through there. So now when I turn this to the inside, I can line it up with this shoulder is my plan. See like that. So this is the dart, this is the front bodice, this is the neckline. Like that. All right, so I'm gonna clip this curve here. That is all sorts of crazy. Oh, that's good. C force. I, I've heard though that Hey June pattern. What pattern, what is that? I'm gonna trim this. And then this, do I want to understitch this? I'm gonna understitch it, but I also might be sewing on this edge again because of the binding that we're about to attach. So actually I won't, I'm not gonna understitch that right now. All right, let's assemble our binding. Let's see, make sure I can tell what the right and the wrong side is. <laughs> Terry's giddy. I'm gonna piece together all my binding. Let's make sure we keep track of right and wrong side. This is so good. This is the wrong side. This is the right sides up. <laughs> this is the trick. You just put them both the same side facing up, cut the angle and then line up the angle. So sometimes instead of figuring it out, I just do that. I just cut it. All right, like this is right side up, right side up. Oh, these are both facing the same way. See the angle is the same. Now when I turn it, line it up, it'll be a nice 
continuous line. So your junctures of the little, the little crook of that triangle hanging off. There we go. Oh, uh, the, the, hi Rebecca, how's it going? Loose pants with zip pockets. Oh, okay, cool. So when this is, but you have to get your head through there. Okay, not with your glasses on. All right, so this, if we're looking at this um, inside out right now, so this is the collar, this is that facing. And so when this facing, I'm gonna bind this edge right here, just like to here is, or to the end of the uh, collar, right? So once that's done, and then we turn the binding around to the side, and then we kind of finish the binding, this is a back neck facing, and it's gonna line up with the shoulder seams here. I turned it under, oh, I didn't actually get to the, what? I thought I got to the shoulder seam there. Hmm. Well, you would want to fold it back at the shoulder seam. So there's the, it is right there. And then you can tack it to the shoulder and it would be clean. Otherwise it would look like this. It would be a 5 8 inch hanging past the shoulder. That's why I did that. And I obviously need to fix this one a little better. This one I think is the one I showed you. So see, Here's the shoulder seam right here. And here is the turn back portion. It's lining up with that. So then it turns and you can just clean finish it like that. That's why I did that. This one looked weird. We knew it looked weird. The, the thicknesses and angles of the collar underneath are um, making the neckline feel a little different. It feels like things are kind of going off in different angles. That's why, and, I, and I'm kind of going, you know, a little fast. So I'm not paying attention very well. So here is the seam. I felt this edge and I thought this was the seam. So it's kind of barely making it on this side. So we'll turn it back a little bit. Re-sew that on there. Okay, so now let's sew our binding. I'm gonna press the seam open. I'm wondering, do you go from, which side do you, does she like you to go from? She starts from what would essentially be the right side and goes to the underside, okay. It's kind of unclear what's happening right here at the juncture at the center front. So I think that there's a few different ways you could do this. Hi, Sydney. Yeah, I think you could actually do a whole front facing. Here's the, the issue with this and why it's probably not like that is it's, this is probably actually more closer to how you would sew it in, um, um, in vintage style. Susie, how's it going? It does count. It's nice to see you. <laughs> I know you've been really busy. <laughs> so because this is the same issue I was having at the side seam where I was like, hmm, how do I finish that? Because it's not a continuous circle, it's a slit. You don't have this nice scoop right here, right? Where you can continuously sew something around. Same thing at the center front here. It's a slit, right? So you could draft a facing and, and then you would have this like facing sticking out right from the edge here. So there's not really a good place for it to end. You'd have two facings sticking out right here, right? All the way. The collar goes down pretty low. I don't think that's actually necessarily a bad thing that um, the facing would go that far, but normally, you know, facing's only gonna go about two inches below the opening. So here's the opening and it would go around right here, right? But you can't just stop there because you still, you don't have, it's not a circle. It's like you start sewing and you're like, uh, where do I stop? It's like a continuous line. I'm trying to figure out how to de describe this the way it would make sense. Whereas most, most neck facings are plackets and things like that. 
you know, it's a continuous circle. So that's partly what's going on here. Um, what I don't like about the binding is that it's going to itself. So it's, you're finding the seam. It's fine. I love binding. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just like, sometimes you just got to do some, some of the um, weirder sewing techniques to get the really cool stuff. <laughs> so, hi RT Blade, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Are you? Have you been wanting to sew this or you just wanted to see some live sewing? Because uh, I'm definitely not doing the best job of doing a little like tutorial. It's been more chatty. <laughs> oh, nice weather there. It's funny, we have weird weather. <laughs> So part of me would like to, you know, bind that whole seam, but I, I already overlocked that. So we're just going to start here. Um, so I'm going to start my binding. I'm just going to go a little bit past that edge there. And I'm only going to catch one side. So I'm going to go around the far side to me right now. This is the neckline. So yeah, so I'm gonna start this in the seam allowance here because I'm not quite sure how else I would do the binding here. But we're just basically we're just gonna bind the seam allowance, get all these raw edges in there. Is this all the binding I cut? Remember when I was like <laughs> a little nervous about my fabric? I don't think this is enough for the sleeves. pretty thick. It's not too thick to sew. It's not thick like denim. It's just a lot of layers, you know. Mm. Did I not do a 5 8 inch seam there? Oh, remember how I was kind of struggling to get that 5 8 inch seam? Oh. Okay, so I take it back about... You know what? This is what you should do. Hi Bernadette, how's it going? This is what you should do when you're sewing this. Bind the neckline. So when you go to do this, don't, I surged my center fronts, I tack the collar around the neckline. That's fine, but don't surge the center front. You can tack the collar to the whole neckline, leave the center front open, bind the neckline, then surge the center fronts, then sew the center fronts together. That is the order you should do this in. So I'm gonna take out some of these, the center front seam, because I can't actually sew around the neckline like this. If this might be how it is in the directions, a I got a little confused. I'm not going to lie about that. So, so the the way to do this, I'm kind of I'm going to correct this as I go, but this is still probably not the, the best way. This will work though. Now I'm going to go around the neckline. I'm going to have to go back and sew the top of my center front seam. I'm just going to go around here. I'm kind of not in that 5 8 inch seam allowance, though. <laughs> it's not wide enough binding for a 5 8 inch seam. You're supposed to cut one and a half inch, but that wouldn't be wide enough for a 5 8 inch seam. That's wide enough for like a 3 8 or a quarter inch seam, but that's about it. So I'm moving this over to meet the seam that I sewed where the facing is, the back neck facing. And now I'm, now I'm on the back neck. And I'm just trying to stay on that same seam line. Yeah, bind the neckline before sewing the center front. Exactly, Michelle, that's what I would do. Get 
rid of some of these threads where I popped out some of that center front right here. Okay. All right, now we're back, getting back to the center front seam right here. And so it gets a little awkward because my seam is already sewn, so I'm trying to stay on the seam allowance. I'm going like all the way down because of my raw collar edges. So that's why I say, if you just buy in the neckline, you wouldn't have to go down the center front too, just do your neckline and then overlock all those edges of the collars, all the collars and the center front together. That would be the cleanest, least amount of layers, a little bit um, more logical, like when you're trying to figure it all out, <laughs> you would be like, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> Cause then you're treating the binding more like a facing and she calls it a facing in here, which confused me at first. But if I think of it as a facing, it makes sense. All right, so I'm just gonna turn back this little tail here. When I get to the end, I just turn it back like a half inch. All right, so now we have our binding. And now I gotta trim this neckline a lot. It has to be uh, narrow enough for me to bind. So another thing is you might wanna just trim down your 5 8 inch seam allowance around the neckline. Hello, Lauren, how's it going? <laughs> that one's all early birds. We know where you live when you say that. <laughs> okay, don't cut your dress like I almost did, or your top. <laughs> Oops. Oof. Look at that. That's not good, but that'll be okay. It's hard for me not to take it all apart and do it again because now I'm like, ooh, now how I know how I would want to do this, you know? All right, so I'm gonna trim this down. This is kind of thick. I just vacuumed. I don't know if that's enough for two armholes, but we'll see. All right, so this is this one here. Trim this. All right. Is there any if you're if any of you are in the guild uh, and you didn't notice it yesterday, I dropped your latest skill building session. If you go to your group, if you're journeyist or master, it's in there. I I cleaned up all the topics and things. I don't want to forget to tell you guys. Um, I made an announcement in the guild too, so don't forget. All on pockets. I can't wait to see what you guys think of the welt pocket part. All right, so let's trim this down a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna bind this. Yeah, see I wish that was overlocked in there. Okay. Do I want to turn this right side out? I think this will work. It's a little tricky here. All right, so we're gonna bind this around. To get this going. This is pushing on me right here, so I'm having a little trouble. Nice, good, I'm glad. Yeah, I started see when I started seeing people join it, I was like, okay, good, you guys are seeing that. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna definitely write myself notes on this pattern just in case I ever make it. 
is pretty thick. This is just like, I, I, this is not my nicest sewing. Where's my all? Here we go. So I'm binding in the seam allowance right now. dog hair. <laughs> what? Can you guys see okay? Yeah, good Libby. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I think, um, I think I've got a good like um, routine now for that and then I cleaned up the other so now it's cohesive looking so I'm really hoping so they're always there you know if you don't it's not like if you don't download it right now it, it disappears if you if you leave the guild you wouldn't get it but if you um, before you leave the guild make sure you download anything you want from any of those skill building sessions you have access to Uh, the guild um, is not Patreon. I kind of moved on from Patreon because I feel like this way I can give back more to the community. So it's sosoguild.com. You can just check it, check it out. <laughs> I saw Libby's word tech and I was like, you can tech it out. There's a free, you can join for free. It's a community. It's really amazing. A lot of these folks are in there and it's just, it's very cool. <laughs> It's very, it's, if you're sick of ads on like Instagram or maybe you're not on Instagram or Facebook and you just want a place to hang out and talk with people about sewing, it's, it's pretty, it's organized, there's a lot of features, there's, there's can be live events in there. So if you're, and there's three groups, there are three paid groups. There's a couple of free groups too. There's um, someone from Australia started an Australia, New Zealand group in there. Um, um, then we started a capsule wardrobe group, and those are just for fun. They're free for everybody. But the paid groups have different, like, benefits to them. And so if you were looking for a Patreon thing, that's what I'm doing now. It just felt, I don't know, I don't really like the way you have, you can give people stuff in Patreon. This is a lot more organized. I stream less now because of it, because I want to give back more to everybody supporting me. So I stream in there though. Like I do workshops um, every other week um, where people can come and just work on their project and ask questions about anything they're having trouble with. Um, we have the Ask a Sewy Question show, which is a live call in like radio style show, but it's a video. <laughs> And it's very fun <laughs> and funny. <laughs> I never know what I'm going to get. It's really fun. I love it. I, I That's kind of like my own little pet project. I love it. So yeah, check it out. SoSoGuild.com. You can see. I need to clean that up, that page, now that I kind of understand it better. How can you ask the previous skill building sessions? No, they're there, Michelle. So if you're in the Journeyist group, go to the topics tab. So you know how in the guild there's topics, events, topics, groups, and you're in the main community of the guild. Go to groups, go to journeyist, and now you're in like a sub guild. And there's still topics on the left side. There's a potential for events and things like that. And that's where you'll see um, a t topics, skill building sessions, and you can get all of them there. So it doesn't matter when you join, you'll have access to all past skill building sessions. I've thought about not doing that because it's not fair to the people who joined early, but at the same time, like, I don't really like making things that exclusive. I've put in all the work to develop it. I want it to get used, you know? It's all, all the work's done on it. People might as well use it. 
especially that first one was all about fitting a set in sleeve. That was a, that was a huge thing. Okay, so there's my binding finish on the neck. Looking good now, huh? Looking a lot better. And so it went, I went all the way around under this facing. You don't have to do that. You could just stop and start right here, but honestly, that's more fussy for four inches. All right, so let's understitch this collar. Hopefully that didn't make it too stiff back here, right? <laughs> It's, the guild's kind of like a forum, but not. It's ni a lot nicer. It's not like a Facebook group where it's a, a, a continuous feed and you'd have to like scroll back through the years. It's more organized than that. People can put things in topics and so then you can go through and look at the topics and stuff. I like that. So. Oh yeah, awesome RT, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, it is really new. So you're not missing much right now. Like you, if you want to read everything ever posted in the guild, it's actually kind of possible right now. <laughs> All right, so this is it still inside out. So let's look at this back neck facing. This is what I've learned with things like this when you want to tether them. So like here we are looking at, here's my collar in my hand. This is the garment inside out. Here's the shoulder, right? And here's my little facing. What I have learned with these kinds of things is less stitching is sometimes better, letting it kind of free float. Remember, remember Jodie Foster in contact and she learned that the chair being attached was a bad idea. Same thing with stuff like this. But look at how much this is turning back right here. Let's see. So I'm just gonna put a little pin here to see how it hangs before I commit to the tacking of it, All right? I'm just gonna do it in the seam allowance of the shoulder seam too. You could stitch in the ditch, but I don't see the point of that for this. You have a nice chunky seam allowance to grab onto. Um, so yeah, let's get rid of this thread here. Here, that's it. This is a very non-traditional sewn top too. Like if you, like um, if anyone is looking at some of these techniques and going, I never sew my tops like that. This is a vintage inspired blouse. And a lot of the sewing techniques on this are pretty unique and specific to this kind of top. And it, it works really well for this kind of top too. Let's turn it right side out. The contact analogy, right? Do you remember that? That's kind of stuck through, stuck in my head. <laughs> Ooh. So there's that binding. Let's make sure that goes to the inside. We don't want that pulling like that. What is this right here? I'll probably check that off camera, make sure, commit to this first. But um, if once I like this, you can just do a few hand stitches, sorry. Um, or, I, you know, sometimes I will just take the seam allowance to here and I would just sew it on my machine too. That's fine. We'll leave it for now though, because it's not that important and we want to make sure that that doesn't make it so that it pulls the shirt funny. You know, you want it to be invisible from the right side. And see right now, it does look like, maybe not. Maybe it's just the thickness of the seam allowance. That might be all that is right there. We're kind of zoomed in, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, Shem. Yeah, Libby, exactly. There's different ways to view things. Yeah, I like that too. The filtering is really nice. You know what I love too is like, if you're like, who was I talking to about interfacing and you just search interfacing, <laughs> then all of the times that comes up, which is a lot, but it does help, you know? 
So here's a few, what are these right here? Oh, I never went back and finished my center front seam. Okay, so let's go do that. Right here. Let's go back and finish this. I'm not sure where it was at, but I didn't take out much. So I'm just gonna go like a half inch, that's it. We just need to make sure we have a back stitch here now. There we go, that actually looked pretty accurate. I can see where the, those threads were. All right, so we need to bind the armholes. And there's the, see the same, same idea, we're gonna go around. Let's see, is, uh, oh, this might be enough. Let's see if this is enough. Oh, I think we're gonna be okay. Oh, the workshop. Yeah, so are you, you're in the, the guild, right, Suzanne? So if you ever wanna to come to workshops and you're in Journeyist or Master Group, they're available to you in the events tab. So if you look on the left side of the screen, there's events in your group. Look in your group. And then you can go to any of the workshops there. Yeah. So right now th there's workshops next week and they're at two different time zones. Uh, one that's great for Oceania, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and then, so that's usually at 4 p.m. Pacific, my time. And then there's one at 10 a.m. on Saturdays for everyone in Europe. Both work for American time zones, obviously, because that's where I'm at. So hopefully it works for, for people. And if it doesn't, I want to know about that so that we can change that or try and try and add a time that works. Like I know Ask a Soy Question Show doesn't work for Shem. All right, so this is the armhole. Here's the side seam. This was the seam I should have finished before I put in that zipper. We're not gonna talk about it. Um, I'm gonna go back and, well, let's do that right now. We're gonna, we're gonna um, rotary knife that with a pink. Ah! That was my water glass. Ooh, good thing I drank a lot of it. All right, we're gonna go to the serger real quick. Okay, I need to get my rotary with the pinking blade. Is my um, necklace bumping the microphone? <laughs> Suzanne, I hadn't um, until like last year. I'm still pretty new at it. You're not alone. If you need help, just tell us. It's, it's actually pretty easy, but yeah, I know it's new. If, it's, if you're new to it, it doesn't seem easy at all. All right, so I'm gonna do this upside down even though it's a little harder because the, the uh, zipper tape is pushing against it. I'm just nervous about getting the blouse, but it is really hard with the zipper tape. I don't usually use a pinking blade to finish my edges. And it looks like I did already, but that's just the interfacing. I'm just gonna do it on this one because I forgot to do anything. <laughs> right around my zipper. Okay. A little bit more. It'll help some, you know. Yeah, please do, Suzanne. Uh, no, I don't think so, Michelle. Knit fabric wasn't really invented till, it was probably about then. I'm trying to think. I, 
kind of knew this, but I, I, I am drawing a blank right now, to be honest. Sergers for home use, though, I feel like really didn't come about until the 80s. And they were pretty pricey. And they were pretty clunky. Like, they were pretty hard to thread. Jet Air threading was still a um, baby. <laughs> it had never been thought of yet. <laughs> Maybe it had been thought of, but it wasn't definitely on machines. That's why I don't actually look for machines with that have it. And I think it's because a lot of us just never had it before, you know. It's awesome, though. Now my machines all have it. It's pretty standard. Oh, jeez. This is... I did, didn't I do this sign already? Oh, there it is. All right. All right, so yeah, I'm just pinking, pinking this little edge here. Yeah, Suzanne, just go to one of the events and then you can even, uh, I think you can just comment on it and ask a question and I'll help you through it for sure. All right, let's bind this. So again, we're not doing this in a continuous circle because it's a slit, right? Oh, someone asked me if I made this, if I would embellish it, do all the stitching. And I don't know if I would. I love that navy blue one so much. I might round the collars, though. I might do a slightly different collar shape. I'm not a big, like, pointy collar person. I do think that the, this one's pretty stupendous, though. This is the back. So we're going to push the seam allowance to the back at the shoulder. Yeah, oh, exactly, Livy, right? There's no numbers on the tension dials, no um, map for how you thread it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you didn't even know which way to go on the dials. <laughs> so funny thinking about that now. All right, so I'm back now across from where I started on this seam allowance here. And I'm gonna go up to where this one ended. I'm gonna give myself a little like half inch turn back tail and now I'm gonna turn it back and stitch it in there. Usually I would just do that as I finish. I wanted to make sure they match. All right, I'm gonna sew my other one on then we'll press it and then I'll finish sewing them. Okay, so this side I hemmed the seam allowance one out of 10, don't recommend. <laughs> Turned out terrible. Really terrible. I'm gonna take it out. I hate it, I hate it so much. Don't know what I'm gonna do yet though. Let's see, I'm gonna... Okay. I just gonna take out a little bit of it. I'll do it later. I might just pink it or you know what I'll do? How impatient are you guys feeling? I think I might just overlock it now that we've already opened up that Pandora's box. No bumping? <laughs> oh, of the machine, Beverly? I think my first serger was $300 and that seemed like a lot of money then. But sewing machines have gotten so expensive. Like ridiculously so. There's no way they really cost that much, you know? Like a really good one maybe. I don't know though. Then there's, I guess there's other machines that are just so cheap. I'm like, wow, I can't believe they can make a machine for $200. That's really cool.
I feel like I'm writing a wrong right here doing this. I really struggled to do this too. Beverly's like, I just wrote a timestamp for you doing that. And now I'm going to write a timestamp that says, oh, wait, I'll write it next to the old timestamp. Beverly, I'll say, uh, she takes this out at this point <laughs> in the next video. <laughs> right, Rebecca, air threading. When I had a serger, I used to thread it with my blindfolded and one hand tied behind my back. Yeah, that's, I know, people are like, whoa, the indust industrial machine, that's so expensive. I'm like, but it's not. <laughs> That's why I have it. That's not one of the, that's the only reason, not the only reason I have it. I mean, I got the, the fanciest one you can and it was $1,800, brand new. Brand new. That's a lot of money, but at the same time it was used for a factory. Like that was my, this is my very first brand new industrial machine I've ever bought. I've always had used machines. Never spent more than six hundred and fifty dollars on them. Three hundred to six hundred. Yeah, right, Debbie. I mean, I didn't want to surge because the fabric is so lightweight, and surging just felt kind of like too budget for such a pretty fabric and garment. But the hem it was looking pretty budget too. <laughs> So why not, you know, at least I'll get some sort of consistency with the serger. Oh, home stretch. I just like rushed this spot right here. So I got to. It's nice and tight now. You know, this side's done. This side is the one I need. Okay. Almost there. It, this was bugging me at home. Like I thought about it. I was like, you know, you're not going to let that stand, are you? I was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, Sarah. You'll fix it. And then I got all the way to the stream. I was like, oh, I forgot I was going to look at that. If it's bugging you, it's probably not going to stop bugging you. All right, I think I still have a little bit there. Oh, there it is, okay. Right, Beverly? I th I like second. I think secondhand machines, especially if you're new to sewing. I get asked that, you know, occasionally. What machine should I buy? I'm new. I just say use. Just get a used machine because you may end up starting with like, I really want to make my own pair of jeans. And then a year from now, you're like, you know, I really love the whole world of doll making clothes, you know? And so I wouldn't get an industrial machine for that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Michelle. My old Jukies, the 5550s, which you still see sold, which is like the older version of this one. Um, my last one, I spent $300 on that. I bought it for $300, had it for 15 years, used it in my factory, sold it for $300. <laughs> Held its value. I also paid to service it probably $300 a year for five years or so. So I, I did definitely keep it up too. You know, like I didn't mess around with it. Um, where was I on this garment right here? Yeah. So what do we think? I think we could safely overlock this separately. Hmm. <laughs> 
nice heavy machine. It's pretty hard to find machines now too. Okay, so I'm gonna try and iron out this edge here a little bit. Oh, all that time I spent doing this, remember? <laughs> I would like this fabric just the background of this fabric is pretty cool. Like I wouldn't mind a print just of the, the background of it. Actually, you really can't see on this camera very well, sorry. This camera always looks really bright on my screen. And then I see put the fabric on there and I'm like, oh yeah, that's not that bright. I don't wanna iron that other side, but okay, here. Okay, let's get this back track. Let's see if I surge these together, if I surge these together, then I'm going to have to snip them to be able to bind this whole edge. That's why I think surging them separately is probably better. But surging separately is a little tricky when you already have a cut seam allowance, you know? Oh, let's, uh, let's press it open. That might help us. need to buy an industrial next. <laughs> Have you tried your mom's? <laughs> You've got the juki mom. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I should, I should have mentioned that exactly what Libby said. You can buy my machine without the electronics. What, what that means is, um, and I have a whole video on using my machine, care and maintenance. It's a very big video, but you can use the timestamps in it to look at what you're interested in. But, um, cause it's like care and maintenance and how to use it. And the, it's the, the, Electronics give me the automatic thread snip. So when I just go click with my heel and I pull out my work and I don't, you don't see me cut it, that's what it gives me. It gives me an automatic back tack if I have it enabled. Um, what else? That's pretty much the main things the electronics do. So it's a lot of money for that feature, but in production sewing, it's pretty essential. All right, so here's the side seam. I'm just gonna go a little bit past it there. Yeah, and then you can get a brand new machine for like 600 or less <laughs> for an industrial. My exact model. We already have the binding on one side, right? Yep. All right, so we're gonna do this side. I'm lost, here it is. <laughs> is this enough? Ooh, look at that. It is so close. Wow. Phew. I'm glad I don't have to cut any binding. I was 
really cutting it close with that fabric. We can all talk machines. See, there's a whole topic in the guild on machines. We could talk about it for a while, couldn't we? I think you just gotta eventually go, this is the machine I have. You can't just keep like, oh, should I get this? Should I get that? You know, you just gotta like, this is what I have. It works great. It's very easy to go down the rabbit hole of wanting them all. All right, this is the back, so we'll press the seam allowance that way. So if you were doing the, the optional version of this blouse, you would be embellishing the, the sleeve openings with that same running stitches. Very cute. All right, we're down on the seam allowance here. Here's this where I started. So that's all I ended up with. Not bad. All right. Oh, you know what I forgot, you guys, is my label. Rip. All right. Oh, I thought I just left myself like a half inch tail, but I really didn't, did I? All right. So I'm going to understitch this. I'm going to understitch this and I'm going to um, press it. So is this stitched to the garment? Oh, you're supposed to hand stitch it to the garment. And I think if you had been doing all the embellishment stitches, you could probably really hide that in there really nicely. <laughs> no, that's fine, Dalwin. <laughs> that's a solid machine. <laughs> you use an embroidery machine for your buttonholes, Shem? It does that? I'm telling you. My, my, uh, I would love for my legacy in the sewing world to have been that I inspired, um, or at least I got into being a dedicated home buttonhole machine <laughs> and um, fabric stores to cut on the grain. Oh, dang, it's already two o'clock. All right. stitch this down I could stitch it down like a vent hmm. right now I'm just under stitching it uh, it'll make it lay flatter and help it pull to the inside and it helps me procrastinate and think about like what am I do next I would do it either way. All right, let's, let's uh, give us a little press. Right, home buttonhole machine. We wants it. A combo machine. Oops. Ugh. Just try to dismiss something and it went to landscape. All right, so this blouse isn't like it's not, I can't really open it flat. So 
Hmm. This is definitely an issue. Oh, Ray, thank you. Binding, we love binding. Okay, I didn't think about this. Look at this. Can you even see that? Let's see. Oh, I didn't think about this. I sewed this at a narrow seam allowance, right? Because it's the binding is only this wide. But you want this to be on the edge. Ugh. I'm not sure how you would do that. I mean, maybe I could just gradually go out. Oh my God. How would you do that? It should be like this, you know? Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Um, I mean, is it supposed to fold? <laughs> this is not right. <sighs> so what would happen if I, well, if I had bound the edge, it would have been really weird um oh yeah yeah what if i did a smaller seam allowance right here i think that's what i will do i think that's what i'm gonna do it's too dark for you to see yeah i'll show you guys yeah i don't think that that is uh most ideal, let's see. Let me just, iron. I'm gonna iron it like this. <laughs> it doesn't need much ironing, but I was just kind of like, you know, this will be helpful. This side's not too dark, so I'll be able to show you really well. I'm doing what the pattern says. So let's see. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, so here's the problem. They, they, it's recommended to use one and a half inch wide binding. But the problem is the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. So if you were to use binding, like you, if you want to sew it on the seam line, that's fine, but it's not intuitive to sew your binding really far away from the cut edge. You know what I mean? So what's happening is, right, so here's my little sleeve, right? Here's my binding. We're looking at the inside, right? Here's the shoulder in this side, the left. So right here, when you get down to here, I'm so thirsty. I mean, it looks kind of good, right? <laughs> it looks like it's working, but see, the thing is this edge wants to be on the edge of the fabric, but the seam is right here, right? And so like you can see how this is, this, I, I sewed this seam allowance a little bit off right here. I have been pretty cavalier on this project. What needs to happen is these need to be really close to each other because this is what's happening on the other side. See? I'll show you on the other side. Maybe we can see it better. It's really obvious. See? So for this to stay on the edge, 
I'd have to bring in this seam right here. Whoop. So I'm going to let the seam out right here. To match the seam, I sewed the um, sleeve binding on. Okay. I saw a pattern yesterday. What was it? There was a sleeveless version and a sleeved version. But you could see her bra. All right. I'm going to take out some of these stitches. I have to take them out to where I started. So it blends in. Oh my God, it's, it's so hard to see. Okay. So my side seam just went out a little bit at the um, armhole here. And now that'll match a little better when I go to sew this the way the instructions say. So you're supposed to sew this like this down and do some hand stitches. All right, and on this side, let's see if we can do the same on this side too. I did sew this very <laughs> straight to begin with. <laughs> so let's take it out. I've done so much seam ripping on this project. I should probably just ask hard, can I just buy this and you guys never see it? Some of those older machines with the buttonhole, like the cams and all that, those are great. I'd consider if there was like some sort of like um, a machine that was known for doing really good buttonholes and it was like older, I would just buy it and, and get rid of my home machine. You know? All right, so... I don't mind that those aren't lined up, but that's so funny. I thought I barely had any to, remember that? I barely had any to turn back. I have more than I think I do. Um, now let me blend this side seam in with that. Put it in the darker spot. And let's see. All right. <sighs> okay. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Right? <laughs> I know, Beverly. I, I can't remember what it was either. I was like, I almost, there was a picture of a pair of uh, pants um, and it was, I got it in a newsletter and they were like, oh, we're now carrying these people's patterns. That's generic enough that you can't figure out who I'm talking about. Um, and um, there was a picture of the pants. I was like, they did not use this picture for the cover of their pants pattern because it fits terribly. And I see this a lot. I mean, I say it in the Honest Pattern Review videos. I'm like, just by the cover of this pattern, I can tell the fit, you know? But no, they did. They used that picture. I sent it to one person. I took a screenshot and I was like, what the heck are they? And I almost posted it in the guild. And I was like, you know, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not gonna start that kind of precedent that I do that. But it was, it's hard, you know? I feel like that I wish I had more um, 
you know, gumption to do stuff like that and just post it on a social media and be like, this isn't really the picture for this, is it? It looks bad. You know, I know you wish I would, but I don't really want people to be afraid of me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bind this and I'm just starting at the bottom of where I started and stopped my binding. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little hard to see. That helps a little bit, right? All right, so what you're looking at is where I folded back the tail of my binding is right here. That is the side seam and we're going towards the armhole, right? And this is my binding. I'm going to turn this under. I would just try and get your binding nice and even because the stitches are going to show and be parallel to the edge of your armhole. So that's what I would be looking at right now is just parallel stitches to the edge of the armhole. No one's gonna see the inside theoretically. Oh, that's cool, Bernadette. Hmm. Um, Anna, you know, I haven't made a specific video about that. Fit can be very personal. I talk a lot about that in when I developed like, so I, I did like a, um, you know, um, a video about, what, what was that one called? It was like, I, I wanted to, to start the conversation about doing honest pattern reviews, which I have now started doing. And um, I did a poll and I asked, you know, what people would want from one. And I decided to share the results of that video. And I talked about it because there was a lot of re like uh, responses that I could tell. I was like, all right, well, we need to talk about some of these things because these are some of these things are unrealistic things to ask for from a pattern company. Oh, that could look a little better. Um, but now I know what I'm dealing with. I can get the other side. So here's, this is what this looks like now. I bet you didn't think it was going to remotely look decent. It looks okay. It could be, it could look better through here. But this is this is this little keyhole opening, right? So the difference between sizing and fit is subtle. And fit is definitely a preference. And the example I give is um the trend of when guys mostly wear pants that are hanging off of their hips and their underwear showing above, right? So I've lived through that whole spectrum of that, that trend from when it started and how people reacted to it to when it went to the other extreme to when it kind of balanced out to where it's at now, right? And so that doesn't necessarily fit the person well, right? but they want it to be like that. They don't want the pants to fit up at the waist, right? So that's a very good example of how it can be very personal. However, <laughs> if you're presenting a pattern to fit the person in the key places of the body that it looks like it's supposed to fit, and then you're still seeing like this pair of pants, the fly looked like it was two inches too long. And it looked like it was something was going on there. Um, that for me, like my eye went right to it. And so I think looking at things and going, what don't I like? What do I like? Maybe you want that kind of like a kind of a look about a garment. Like, like a, another good example, in my opinion, is the Cali shirt dress. 
There's nothing wrong with the fit of that. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that gives the person a very specific silhouette. And I, for, on me, I love to call it the pillow hunchback because it does not look good on me. It gives me this like hunchback, like looks like I have a pillow on my back. And so, but if you see that on a specific body type in a, different, in a, in a specific posture and styled a certain way, it has a specific silhouette then maybe you're after that, right? And I've seen this silhouette, that particular one, as a trend. I don't think people realize what kinds of trends there can be, right? And that is one. And so you're looking for that. I'm not looking for that. You know what I mean? So I think um, when it comes to fit and you want to really talk about what fits good, you have to limit it to what you're talking about. So if you're talking about pants, there are some hallmarks of how pants fit. If you're talking about blouses, there's some, you know, or shirts or tops or whatever, and if you're talking about sleeves. And then from there, you go from to style, right? Yeah, there, there is, Anna. Yeah, and I think like, um, it's a big topic. <laughs> and I talk about it from time to time. Oh, cool. Yeah, you did watch that video. She hates hand in, hands in pockets. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, sure, Anna. I mean, like, like, you know, I'm starting to do more fit specific stuff, but it's going to be in the guild. It's so much work to do it. And I'm slowly been trying to get people to do their own, um, locks and slopers and I've been working on it for a couple of years you know I did like a, a whole f a sloper fitting thing or making your own basic block a couple of years ago that's all on YouTube I've done it a few times there's a pattern drafting section in my there's like a pattern drafting playlist it's all so much work and it's so personal and everybody has their own specific things that it's really got to come from you really have to have a big desire to want to do that stuff and you can't really rely on a whole, like, especially in the world we're living because we're all, like, n not close to each other. If you're in a class and you're one-on-one, -on -one, that's the most ideal way to do it. So if you have that opportunity near you, I highly recommend it. And, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she gives a good, she gives a really good fit assessment at the end of the Love to Sew podcast. And... You can go, it's the first time I went to the Love to Sew show notes and looked at the photos as she was doing them, and it was pretty good. And someone in my guild is going through her whole program. It's like once a year, and it's pretty intensive. So, um, yeah, there are places where you can do something like that. Like, I started off with fitting a set in sleeve, basically because that's not an easy thing to fit, but at the same time, it's not the body. So we can start there and it kind of starts people kind of getting into the mode of fitting across the shoulders and fitting the armhole. And we're about to have like a live stream about it in the guild. It won't be on YouTube. And I'm going to go through fitting, um, what's the shirt I'm doing, you guys? Oh, the cashmere at Montrose top. It's still in the package. I'm going to do it totally cold where I'm going to pull it out of the package. I'm going to sew it as a muslin. I'm going to put it on my form and I'm going to fit it. And we're going to go through the whole thing of how to fit a set in sleeve. Fit it, not sew it, but fit it using a ready to wear pattern that you already own. And I picked that one because I think that that Cashmere has a lot of really good um, starting patterns. She has a, most of her patterns are very classic, basic blocks. And I'm not saying that as in her style is boring. I'm saying like she's got a very classic style of um and they're all very like what you would draft in college like a lot of her styles and things um in some of her patterns so it's perfect for that and it comes in a lot of sizes so i'm starting with that and um we're gonna go through i'm not paying attention here um i'm gonna do the whole thing i'm hoping i can do it all in one stream I have no idea. I didn't even. I haven't even looked at the hashtag for that shirt. So I'm I'm kind of flying blind. But I feel like a lot of us do that, right? So I think 
that's next Thursday, right? Oh, I better get some fabric for that. <laughs> oh, I think I have some fabric, Never mind. All right. Yeah, and I'm gonna just do more fitting things, but they'll just be in the guild. I feel like it's a good place for it. Okay, I would definitely do this a little differently, I think, uh, but I'm not gonna go into it now. I'm kind of losing my um, <laughs> focus to where I can think about it. Okay, but that's not too bad. So, you know, it's not hand sewn like you're supposed to do. I would, you would see the hand stitches though, so why not do the machine so this is how it's looking. I have a little bit of torquing right here. That's annoying. See it? Eee! <laughs> it's my Tyrannosaurus Rex sound. Eee! All right, all we have left is the hem. That's it, the hem. That seems harmless. <laughs> yeah, well, we, if you ever plan on joining the guild, we'd love to have you there. It's free to join. It's fun. All right, so I'm gonna just, I think I'm just gonna press this a little bit around the bottom and just see what I got going on. I always do this, I go to the iron C. All right, what have I got? Plus I wanna open up this front center front seam, press it open, which I haven't done yet. There it is. Oh, I have a zoom today at four. I better get done so I can eat. Oh, thank you for staying warm, Iron. Maybe you need a name. Um, I feel like I could trim this a little bit more even, you know? Get out of the way, salami. I have a few junctures that aren't lining up perfectly, like right here, see that? And it looks like my, my zipper kind of stretched the seam out. So let's just trim it a little bit to match that side seam. See this one's longer here. And that one's matching up though, hmm. And go like this. Nice smooth edge. This is when all the people with rolled hemmers are rejoicing because this would be kind of a good fabric, I think, for a rolled hem foot. I don't know about going through seams. How does it do when it goes through seam junctures? Are those 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 things work pretty good? Oh, I didn't quite get that evened up, did I? Shoot. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I don't mean to feel make you feel stressed about it. So the, the guild is more like, it's like Instagram. You don't have to do anything in there. The hem, what could go wrong? <laughs> Yeah, so the guild is like, it's like social media without the ads and um, pressed, and that's cute. You can just share things. So you could even just be like, you can sew something once a year. I mean, like, it doesn't really matter that way for us. And um, you can say, like someone just posted today, you know what, I really want some fusible interfacing. What do you guys recommend? Where do you get it? You know, I want to buy it online. And then people can put like where they get it. And that's a great place. Like some the person who started the um, Australia, New Zealand member group. I mean, part of what she did that for is because they can't order from the States very regularly. So they want to share <laughs> places and stuff. So. Oh, you envy everyone's sewing time. Oh, it varies in there. It varies. 
Yeah, it definitely varies. There's a lot of people who are sewing it. They're, everybody sews at their own pace, but yeah. Irene. <laughs> Wait, I, Irene, like iron? <laughs> Irene Preston. <laughs> These little dart points are, uh, you kind of tuck them in the hem there. Yeah, no pressure, Anna, at all, really, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, that's what I like. I feel like, I feel like I'll go to Instagram and I'll be like, oh, and then I go to the guild and I'm like, oh, it's just like so different. <laughs> I don't know how to put my, put, like put it to words. <laughs> Is the rolled, the rolled, um, Nancy's using voice to text again. Okay, that's good to know. I, I kind of figured that doesn't seem surprising at all, you know? Who needs a rolled hem foot? I'm doing okay. At least I hope I am. Okay, wait, which way do these go? These go this way. I didn't, I still haven't put a label on. All right, so we're winding down. Um, my next live streams are not next week, but the next, the following week. Because next week I spend a lot of time doing guild zooms and things like that. Um, being available for that. Uh, I was supposed to make Michael some overalls, but I think my spoon flower fabric will be here by then. So I think I'm going to make jeans for myself out of that. Just to capitalize on the, the moment, you know? He'll be fine. <laughs> Nello, yeah, that's right, Nello. Nancy comes into chat, Nello. Nello! <laughs> okay. Almost done. So exciting. Am I gonna run out of thread? This thread is honestly, it looks too heavy for this garment. Now I see it on the hem. I started and stopped by the way at my zipper. It felt appropriate. Cool. Should we see it on the dress form? Let me put a label on it. Put a label on it. I mean, I'll just do that, right? <laughs> Can I tell? Because you wrote, the world hand foot is very tricky going over seam junctures. <laughs> Impress no one. I like that. <laughs> That's a really good motto. I think um, I was thinking about um, like literally phones and 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 social media have made the world a, a bad place. <laughs> yeah, Instagram. Yeah, everywhere is just overwhelming, especially if you're like, I really want to do this hobby. Everyone else can do it all the time. How come I can't? You know? Got to remember, this is what I do during the day. I don't have another job, so. Oh, good. That was a little loose thread. See, I'm not liking this, but I think it's because of the way it's hanging here. Let's see. See, when I do this, it, it kind of hangs nice. See? 
I'm gonna turn it inside out. All right, let's look at the dress form and then I'm gonna go have lunch. Yay! Anna, that's how I kind of felt that way I, the other day. Uh, someone, this is kind of not related, but it is related. Let's, can I get this on my dress form? You know what? I might not be able to. The side zip might not be enough. She's pretty stiff. She's not very easy to slide things over, but we'll see. Um, this is kind of related, but not. But um, I was watching this streamer he was streaming a playstation state of play thing about a new game coming out and it's a harry potter game and um i used to be the biggest like i can like trivia all of it really good at the harry potter stuff right and um people started talking in chat and i was like i just couldn't do it i was like no sarah me you can't correct these people <laughs> I don't get that way about sewing. I used to, but I don't anymore. I can let a lot go by. <laughs> I don't know what was making me feel like, oh, I'm overwhelmed in the Harry Potter stream. Ooh, the back fits so nice. I think that the center front seam is pretty big. Oh, I love the way the back looks. Yeah, right, Anna, exactly. Very cute. Okay, so this seam right here is pretty stiff. It doesn't look bad, but you know how you see this little ruffle on the in the photos? That is partly because this seam right here, I think what you could do is press it open and maybe even tack it down under the collar, making it flat. This is pulling slightly here. I think I'd put this on uh, inside out on my dress form and then we'll check the um, how this back facing is laying, but it's doing pretty good. This is the side with the zipper. Very cute. Very cute. Oof. I can't wait to try this on. It kind of goes down a lot in the back. Maybe it won't when it's on me. You know, like you see the hem going swooping down. I wanted to do that. It was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. I really struggled on this one, didn't I? Or maybe I'd lengthen this for me because of my belly. Look at that sway back. <laughs> I'm just walking around like this. <laughs> Very cute. Very cute. Ooh, that fabric is beautiful. So what do we think of the collars though? I mean, can you see them? Here's one. See them all right here? Maybe if you have the, the screen up big, but I don't know if you can really see these collars very well. Yay. This will be really cute on Lexi. Yeah, you like how that, I do, I actually like the way the pattern ended up too. It's such an interesting repeat that it kind of like, you know, diminishes and then it clusters up again. It's kind of lost on this collar, unfortunately. The collar's lost on this. Yeah. Yay. Well, thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> Jeans, no problem. Cute blouse, all the problems. <laughs> all right, well, um, so yeah, so I'll be here like a week and a half. Last week of March on Monday, uh, Wednesday, and I'm probably cutting some jeans, non-stretch. I don't think I want button fly though. 
I could though, because I could just do the Dawn jeans. <laughs> I like the pointiness of these colors on the solids, you know, and, and these prints, like not embellished. I think the embellishing really makes them, you know, um, accentuates it. So if you like the pointy color thing, I think the embellishment is kind of key, you know. And you see it on the sleeve edge too. This is going to be so cute on Lexi. And here's the line drawing. Yeah, you'll take 10. <laughs> Susie. <laughs> yeah, no. Me next. I don't even get to keep it. <laughs> cool, Shem. Thanks for coming, you guys. Really appreciate you. Thanks for the donation, Ray. Binding, binding. <laughs> we love it. And we got to use it. Yeah. I could, I need to figure out what am I going to try it on with? My ash jeans, my black ash jeans could work. You know, do peeps really like button flies? I don't know. My problem with them is that I don't do them all, undo them all, like when I'm taking my pants on and off, and then I stretch out that one hole. So, oh, Mullen, that sounds perfect. Yeah. All right, you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming. I'll see you guys in the guild. I'll see some of you in the Zoom later on. And um, have a great weekend. Next time I see you, March will almost be over in the live stream on YouTube at least. But I'll have a few uploaded videos that are coming soon too. So a couple more pattern reviews. So, All right, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. And um, let's see. Where's my thingy? Okay, bye.